Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku became a support engineer part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story Starstorm 2112-2 from Fanfiction Net. So let's start the video. Midori is POV you want to what? Mom asked. I. I want to do all three. I exclaimed. All three. Mom asked again. There isn't a rule against it. Dad said reading over the rule book. So technically, he could. Yeah. And the testing times are separate. The business course exam is at 8am, the support course exam is at 11am, and the hero course is at 1pm but all of them. Mom asked for the third time, and those leave about 4 hours each before the hero course. I can blaze past the tests and rush over to the hero course exam. I said, hum, this will be tough son, are you sure you can handle it? Dad asked with a proud looking smile. Yes, I said, brimming with excitement. Well I approve. Dad said, what about you Han? Just one question. Why? Mom asked. Because I want to be just like you. I said before looking at them, I want to be a pro hero. But I also want to be a support item designer like you dad. And I also want to one day take over New Leaf and make it the biggest store Japan. No the whole world has ever seen. It's going to be hard. But I want to do this. I want to make you proud. Oh, oh all right. She accepted finally. But if you so much as break a limb you'll break a plate and breaking plates costs money. I recited afterwards. Glad you remembered. She replied. But how are you going to do the practical? You don't have a quirk, and without one doing the practical will be difficult. Yeah, and according to this, you can't bring weapons like ebony and ivory or rebellion. Dad said, I like devil may cry, don't judge me. Hum, I have an idea. And it requires a lot of stainless steel. I said, I'm listening. Dad said with an excited smile. He may be a support designer and mainly uses tech, but loves welding, works with his quirk better than typing on a computer. I want a bat in a frying pan. I said, I understand the bat, but a frying pan. Mom asked, it acts more of a shield, but at first glance, the enemy will underestimate it. I pointed out, I like it, Dad said with a smirk. That's the kind of creative thinking I like, but those will be super heavy. I have 10 months before the exam, I can handle it, I said. Then I have no further questions. I should have those ready by next week, Dad said, but you still have to help around the store. Mom said, got it, and so 10 months of building up arm and leg strength has come and gone as well as avoiding Bakugou. He constantly boasts about how he will the only one from Aldera Junior High making it. All I know is that he will be super upset when he hears I made it into you and not just that, making it into all three of the different departments. Anyway it's time for the exams. The business course exam was extremely easy. It was all basic business-related topics and questions. Boring. The support course exam was at least more exciting. Aside from the written exam which was math, science, and other different topics required to attend high school, but the practical gave us an hour to build something and present it to the examiner, who was power loader. Yes, it was difficult to not fanboy over him. Anyway after years of learning from my dad, I built something simple and fast. Is that a robot? Power loader asked looking at the small little ball in front of him. Yes, I said as I pushed the button on his back, causing him to wake up and hover into the air via propeller. I named him R0B, or Rub. Interesting, what does it he? I corrected. What does he do? Power Loader asked. Simple, I said as I pulled up a thick sheet of metal and placed it onto the podium. Rob, hyper beam. Rob then pulled out a refurbished laser pointer from within him. He then fired the laser, resulting him in not only creating a small hole in the sheet of metal, but a few walls behind it. Oh oops, maybe I should have dialed it back a bit. I muttered as Rob gave a few happy beeps and boops before landing on the desk and going into sleep mode. What he hell? Everyone exclaimed. That's amazing. A pink-haired girl exclaimed, can I take it apart? I want to see all the little ins and outs of that. I instinctively backed up, you ah, uh, s sorry, but he wouldn't like being ripped apart. I said, swallowing my nervousness of being in such close proximity of a girl. Boo. She pouted, anyway sir, here's my presentation. She exclaimed, bye if that's your presentation, then you're finished. Power loader said, oh okay, bye sir. I said as I took Rob and ran away. The hero course exam is in 15 minutes. Gotta hurry and grab my stuff. The hell are you doing here, Deku? Bakugou asked, who decided to sit next to me? I'm here to pass and join the hero course. I said, huh, and with what? He asked, being infinitely louder than before, you don't even have a fucking quirk. That made most of the applicants lose it. No quirk, he's doomed. Well that's one less applicant to worry about. See, no one believes you can make it keep talking. I said, which silenced the whole crowd, because I'm ready to win. Before Bakugou could counter, present Mike, finally, decided to step in. Hey hey, enough of that. 
he yelled. We still have to go over the exam. He tch'd and sat back down. I took a deep breath and listened. Time to prove all of them wrong. This is it, a mock battle. The objective is to take out as many robots you can. The higher the point value, the powerful the robot. There is also this zero pointer, it mainly serves as a wall. Anyway, I have my frying pan, my bat, and Rob. Everything only excuse me. I turned to see, a blue-haired boy. Yes, I asked. You are quirkless correct. He asked as snickers were heard. And I thought this kind of treatment was over and done with last century. Correct, I said. Well, you are clearly not meant for this line of work. I expected that statement, so I suggest you lean start. Present Mike yelled. I wasted no time in running off. If the other applicants want to count me out, by all means, I'll just pass and move on. Principal Nezu's POV it's that kid again. Mr. Power Loader said. Again, Mr. Aizawa asked. Yeah, he was at the support course exams. He replied. He was also taking the business course exams. Not only that, he got all of the questions correct. Wait a second, is he? I swiftly pulled out the UA rule book. See anything principal? Ms. Midnight asked. No, no I have not. And that's a good thing. I said. Principal, you're smiling. Is something happening? Mr. Snipe asked. Yes, ha ha ha. Something is happening. H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-
but you were the one who did. So thank you, she said before leaving. Talking to girls is so hard. It was the next day. When I got home my parents swarmed me, asking me how I did, before backing off immediately telling me to shower. Once I exited I told them everything that happened. Dad wanted to see Rob. Then told me that I can make many, many upgrades to him. But for now, Rob is amazing and the laser is potent. Oh and he told me the legendary bat and holy fry pan needs slight repairs to the paint job. But anyway rambling. Today was, something unexpected. All three of us were invited to a private meeting at UA to discuss. Something important. Every single staff member was there, even All Might. So I'm going to get right to the chase because I know how busy you all are. My name is Principal Nezu I don't know whether I'm a dog or a mouse or a small bear. But what I do know is that your son, Izuku Midoriya, has passed all three of the exams. He, I did what? We asked. Not only that, but he got the highest scores on all three of them. He, I did what? We asked, louder this time. Indeed, your son has accomplished a great feat no one has even known you can attempt. But he noticed a loophole in the rules and realized that was possible. Principal Nezu said, which puts us in a difficult position. Here's the stipulation. So are you saying he can't do it? Mom asked. Oh far from it. He said. Wait what? We fully intend on letting your son take all three courses. The business course, the support course, and the hero course. He said. W what? I asked. You waste the exams. You have every right to be in those courses. Mr. Aizawa said. But that's where the difficulties come in. See, with you being in the three courses, you need to have two more classes. Our schedules are strict so that way our students won't be too exhausted and drained per week. Midnight said. So as such two classes need to be dropped to make way for those two classes. Cementos said, Seriously it's so hard to not fanboy here. We decided on mathematics. Since the support course is heavily based on mathematics and you aced the exam, it's clear mathematics isn't a problem for you. All Might praised. However to make sure you're keeping up with your studies a mathematics test will be given to you at the end of every month. Principal Nezu bartered. I am fine with that. I stuttered. No calm down Izuku. These are your teachers. But we have no idea what should be your last class you need to draw English. Dan said. English? They all asked. I started up in America. However, I moved back a decade ago to start up New Leaf with my wife. So I decided to teach Izuku everything I knew about English. Show them son. Dan said before patting my shoulder. What do I say? I asked. Something complicated. Oh I know. Tell Cementos that whole analysis you did of him. He said. D dad. I yelled. They aren't supposed to know about that perfect. Go right ahead, all of it in English. Principal Nezu urged. Fine, I started. So Cementos' quirk is cement. It's a powerful quirk, but it's entirely defensive, as well as for city repair. It's unknown whether or not Cementos can use his quirk in an offensive fashion, i.e. creating a cement wave to hit them with great force. As far as I can tell for offensive capabilities is being able to bury opponents. The upsides to all this is that Cementos, as far as I could tell, has no clear limit so long he has the cement supplies he can use his quirk as long and as much as he wa okay. I think we heard enough. Principal Nezu said. S sorry, I tend to ramble. I apologized. Man this is embarrassing. Anyway, I think we're in agreement. The subjects that are being dropped are mathematics and English. With progress exams every month. Principal Nezu said. But how will the hero course go? I asked. On that. You will be in both 1A and 1B. Principal Nezu said. I thought we agreed he would be in 1A. Mr. Aizawa asked. Oh we did. But his analysis have piqued my interest. And if it interests me, I want to hone it. Principal Nezu said. So you want him to analyze all of the students? Mr. King asked. Exactly. Principal Nezu exclaimed. I approve. Dad exclaimed. Dad. Midoriya's POV I still can't believe I got into all three of the different courses. Not only that, but my classroom is. Class 1 I am. Literally named after me. Why I can't. Not only did I get into my dream school, accomplished my goal, but I'm also immortalized into school history. Okay maybe not that, but you get what I mean. And on top of that, I am the first quirkless student to even get in. Sure Bakugou had a few choice words to say, but a small price to pay for doing thy thud what? I looked down to see. A little girl. Oh oh oh. Right, you isn't for three weeks, and I was amping myself up to lower my nervousness levels, and in reality I'm just going out to get some stuff for New Leaf. Oh, and there is a girl clutching my leg tightly. He please, save me. She whimpered as a guy with a beak mask walked up to me. Yeah, yeah he just screams shady. I apologize for my daughter he continued to talk, but I am too busy freaking out to listen. Okay Izuku, calm down. There is a little girl. There is a guy with a beak mask, there is you, and there is a bunch of people. Running with her would be a good and a bad thing, because while he can't hurt us, he could turn this on me saying I'm a kidnapper. I could call for help, but it's his words against mine. Then again the girl would be a valuable. Duh forget it, call all might and stall. I reached into my back pocket subtly and pulled out a button. 
Principal Nezu stated that I was, and I quote, a valuable asset and should be protected as such. So this button was created a day after the meeting so I can contact All Might should I be in danger. All I can do now is stall. So this is your daughter? I asked. Brilliant. Use the biggest conversation point out the gate me. What a good idea. Correct. We were playing a game of hide and seek. He said simply. Is that what they're calling it nowadays? Now if you don't mind, give me back my Dao I am here. All Might yelled as he punched the man in the face, knocking him out. All Might, I said as All Might walked over to me. You did well in using that button, but please don't make it a habit of getting yourself wrapped up into danger. All Might warned, it's good that you want to help people, but don't put yourself into danger without proper training and paperwork. All right, I replied. Now let us take him to the station. Right, I don't know what give you the idea to call All Might. But that was the best decision you could have made. The detective, Sukachi said. We brought that man and the girl, who I soon learned her name was Eri, to a nearby police station. See, this man, known as Overhaul. He claims to work alone. But that was a lie. However, we cannot find any of his lackeys. That made the girl tense up. Well, let's get her and her family somewhere safe. I stated. But there's a problem. All Might spoke up. There is always a problem. See, little Eri doesn't have any known family. Oh, that's simple. She can live with my parents and I, I said. What? They, including Yuri, asked. I quickly called my parents. They said they would be here what happened. They asked, right now. We explained the situation to mom and dad. They took one look at Yuri before mom pulled her into a tight hug and said, and I quote, I want her. I need to protect her. Well that settles that. Dan said, yeah, that settles that. The move and went extremely well. Yuri took well to mom and dad, and mom absolutely loved her. She always wanted a daughter as well as a son. Dad said simply as mom got ready to take Yuri to go shopping. Then why don't you make another I asked but mom cut me off by placing a hand on my mouth. Don't ask. Mom warned. But, dad explained anyway. See, I'm not going to tell you about the birds and the bees. But doing, you know what, with a fire breathing quirk, doesn't work. I still have the burn scar on my chest. Mom muttered as Iri looked extremely confused. And I learned something. Something I didn't want to learn. What are you doing? A small voice I instantly recognized as Iris asked. I'm making some cookies for the customers. Or the lack of customers. What seemed to be a boring task to anyone. Iris' eyes lit up. See can I help? I looked at her and smiled. Sure, grab an apron and that stool. She nodded and rushed to grab her things. Once she did she climbed up onto the stool and looked at the tray of bald cookie dough. As I put it into the fridge to let it chill for a few days. I'm going to show you how to make good cookie dough. Okay, she exclaimed with excitement as I placed a chilled batch into the oven for the customers. As they were baking I pulled out the last of the set-aside ingredients to make the last batch for the day. So one of the easiest ways to make cookies taste even better is by browning your butter. I said as I placed two sticks of vegan butter into the pan. I'm not a vegan by any means, I still eat meat, well fish and poultry. But if you ask me, I'd rather the animals be killed swiftly for their meat than being exploited for their lactation, it's just wrong. But anyway back to the recipe. I placed the two sticks of vegan butter into a heated pan and let them melt. So one cup is about 225 grams. So what you do is let the butter heat up until you see it turn brown. That means that the milk fats have separated and, well, turn a light golden brown. I said as we waited a few seconds before it turned brown. Once you see that immediately take it off the heat, some of the butter is going to burn. But that's fine. So once you have a good batch, refrigerate it for at least an hour or until it solidifies. I took the cup of butter and put it in the fridge only to grab another cup of brown solidified butter. We'll use that later. Okay, Yuri replied. So once the butter has solidified, we need to plop it into a stand mixer. We want cold butter that's the ideal type of butter. After that add 60 grams of plain old white sugar, and then 170 grams of brown sugar. You can use light or dark brown sugar depending on how sweet you want your cookies. I'm going dark. I explained while dumping the measurements into the bowl. Now you just mix it medium speed for about 3 to 4 minutes until thoroughly combined. After that, you grab a mixture of 1 tablespoon of flaxseed meal and 3 tablespoons of water. Mix to combine then let it sit in the fridge for 15 minutes. I already prepared that. I said as I pulled it out of the fridge and dumped it into the bowl. After you added that, mix to combine. But what about the eggs? Yuri asked. The flaxseed mixture is a substitute. We don't use eggs here. I said. Oh. She replied. So, now we add our dry ingredients. We're adding about 11 ounces or 322 grams of flour. 16 grams of kosher salt. Yes you should do this, and it's kosher salt. Kosher salt is bigger and for lack of a better term, weaker than table salt. Next is 2, 5 grams of baking soda. And my special ingredient, 75 grams of cinnamon. It adds a bit of warmness to the cookies and doesn't make them taste too cinnamony. 
I explained as I poured all of the ingredients and mixed them together until they are thoroughly combined now, you need to add them to the wet ingredients. Here's a tip, don't add everything in at once, pour around half of the bowl into the wet ingredients. We don't want to overmix the mixture once flour was introduced. It will result in glutton which will result in tough cookies. Okay, she nodded writing this stuff down. Be still my heart. Now, you can add whatever you want. I'm adding the tried and true chocolate chips, but you can add anything you want. Just be careful with nuts. More people are allergic to nuts than chocolate. I explained. Okay. She responded. Now, once your dough is well mixed, you grab a small clump of it and roll it into a ball. Then, something I like to do is tear that ball open to create little cracks and crevices it's mainly for aesthetic. Anyway put them in a 375 degree oven for 12 minutes 17 minutes to create. I said as I placed that tray into the oven all the while pulling out the smaller tray of cookies I made for this demonstration. Cookies. She rushed over to the pan, only for me to lift it above her head. Biba. It's hot, that's what. I said as I set the pan down onto the stove top. Your mouth would be too much in pain before you can actually taste it. She pouted, but waited for the cookies to cool enough to still be warm, but not painful. Once I gave her the go-ahead she took one and took a bite. Show guad, she exclaimed before scarfing down the rest of the cookies. I, I think I created a monster, a cookie-loving monster. Son, let's work on Rob. Dad exclaimed as he dragged me into the office with Uri in tow. He said he wanted to make sure I don't mess anything up and turn him into a toaster. Like that would happen, but in reality he wanted to tinker around with Rob. As we were working in concentrated silence, Dad spoke up. Hey son, I need some parts. He said as he handed me a list of parts, along with a stack of yen, there's a store down the road. I nodded, took the list and money and walked off. I'm sensing a trend here. On the ground in an alley was a bird with a wounded wing. He, she, they were struggling to get up. I, I couldn't leave it to be eaten by some stray cat. So I rushed to the department store, conveniently placed right next to me. I purchased some veterinarian bandages, luckily they had some. And they were on sale too. But anyway, I rushed back to the bird. They were defensive, but I approached slowly and carefully. Once they assumed I wasn't a major threat I began treating its wing to the best of my ability. Which wasn't much, but I'd say I did an okay job at bandaging the wing. Now it's time to take it home. So let me get this straight. Dan started. I told you to go to the store to get parts. You not only didn't even reach the store, but found a bird. A peregrine falcon no less, tended to her wounds, and brought it home. Yes, I replied as the falcon continued to eat a dead pigeon. Yes, we bought a dead pigeon for her to eat. And yes, mom did faint at the sight of it. Uri, she just stared at her curiously. Remind me to never send you out to buy stuff. Alone, dad commented. The falcon, to which I named her Light, stayed around to rest and let her wing heal. We brought a real veterinarian to check out her wing. She said the bandage work was shoddy at best, which stung a bit, but she said the wing will take about two weeks to heal. She showed me how to properly wrap a wing and was off on her merry way. After the two weeks, Light was flying around properly. We opened the door to let her fly off to live the remainder of her life. And she did. Only to fly back and sit on my head. PFFT. Mom started to laugh, as she thinks her head is a tree. T this isn't funny. I exclaimed before sighing to myself. Looks like Light is staying. I'm going to get groceries. I called out. No you're not. Mom called out. We can handle a daughter in a Light, but we can't afford another addition. She said as she gently dragged me away from the door. Besides, you have your first day of school tomorrow and you still need to finish Rob's upgrades. Oh right. I exclaimed stirring light from her nap. Then hop to it. I'll be back soon. Mom said as she headed out the door. I sighed to myself and walked towards the workshop. Light flew onto my head as I passed by. And Ari walked up to me. She has taken an interest in watching me and dad tinker and she has been fiddling with different, safe, tools as well. All right. Time to get to work. Many hours later I did it. Now time. 2. The RRIIINNGGG. GAH. I yelled at the sudden, loud noise. Wake up. Dad yelled pulling the alarm clock away from my face. You slept in here. Class is going to start in an hour. Shoot. Come on. 1 I am. 1 I am. It shouldn't be that hard to my Midoriya. I turned to see. Mr. Aizawa. Oh, Mr. Aizawa. I exclaimed. Where is 1 I am? I asked. You're not going there right now. Instead come with me to class 1A. He said. Oh okay. I asked. I followed him towards 1A's classroom. Then hesitated, come on, we don't have all day. He said, all right, I said as I entered the classroom. Once I entered, 19 pairs of eyes were on me. You uh, hi, I greeted. Oh, robot boy, the brown-haired girl exclaimed, before Mr. Aizawa walked past me and headed inside. Hello, I'm Shota Aizawa, your teacher. He said which got shocked looks from everyone. I get the feeling telling them he's a racer head isn't a good idea, right? Let's get to it. Put these on and head outside. Everyone nodded and headed outside. I was the last one to leave. Before Mr. Aizawa stopped me, 
Just a second Midoriya. He said before handing me a piece of paper. Principal Nezu told me to give you this. You know what to do. I gave the paper a once over. It was a list of 1A and 1B's quirks. So he really does want me to analyze them. Interesting. Let's see. Invisibility. Dupli arms. Oh no. There is a Yeyarazu here. Midoriya, catch. Mr. Aizawa said as he tossed me a ball. You know what to do. Anything goes. Just stay in the circle. I'll worry about the Yeyarazu later. I gripped the ball and got ready to throw. Only to hear something high-pitched. Then have something land on my head. What is that? Everyone exclaimed. Light. I asked as she hopped off my head and hovered onto the ground. What are you doing here? I asked. She didn't respond. She just gripped the ball onto her talons and took off. After a few seconds she dropped the ball. 10, 7 kilometers, Mr. Aizawa said. But that's cheating. A pink-skinned girl exclaimed. Is it? Mr. Aizawa asked. I did say anything goes. And that bird she's a peregrine falcon. And her name is Light. I corrected as she landed on my head. Whatever, Mr. Aizawa said. Is Midori his ally, so it's allowed. But what about his quirk? A red-haired boy exclaimed. Don't have one. I said as I stepped out of the circle. What? Everyone exclaimed. Everyone started to talk and say things. Before Mr. Aizawa stepped in. This is a waste of time. Hurry up and get these tests over with. He said. Why yes sir. The Yeyarazu has an amazing quirk. She can, as far as I can tell, create anything from her body. Fat cells maybe. Either wa hey you. I looked up to see. A girl with purple hair and earphone jacks for earlobes. Kaiwu Kajiru. Yes. I see you looking at her. We don't need three pervs in the school don't misunderstand. I said which quieted her down. I don't want anything to do with the heiress of the Yeyarazu conglomerate. Midoriya, it's your turn. Mr. Aizawa said, coming, I said as I walked away from the group of students, but could still hear their whispers. The Yeyarazu conglomerate, did she do something to him or something? Probably, did you see the anger in his eyes? She did well during the 50 meter dash, creating a motorcycle to speed through. I now have a new goal, to beat her. Rub, I said as he hovered in front of my, tighten your claw around this. Beep beep boop. He beeped an affirmation as he lovered his claw onto the machine and squeezed. 550 kg. The machine said out loud. W what? The guy with dupli arms, Mizo Shoji said in shock. I outfighted Rob with a claw. It's mainly used to grab things and carry them, but it has the strength of a hydraulic press should the need for it arise. I said as Rob let the machine go and went back into sleep mode. I think he's pissed. The guy with tape dispensers for elbows said, hand to Ciro. Yeah, probably. The purple-haired boy, Minoru Minda said. Next was the standing long jump. Yeyarazu used a long pole and a few rocks to pull vault herself over the sand pit as Bakugu and Ayama flew over it. But I had other plans. Rob, I asked as he came out of sleep mode. Beep boop boop. He asked, this might be asking too much of you, but can you carry me over the sand lot? Beep beep. He beeped with affirmation. Thanks buddy, drop me when it gets too taxing. I said as he gripped my arm with his claw and lifted me up. Dad helped me upgrade his propeller as well as give him two more to help him lift heavier stuff. And it showed. He lifted me far past the sandbox and gave me second place in this challenge before letting me go, with Bakugu being the only one ahead of me. Beep. Boop. He beeped, signaling he's tired. Good job, Rob. I praised. Take a long rest. That should be the last thing I need you for. I said. He gave one last beep before returning to sleep mode. Next was repeated side steps. Minda got the highest score in this department with 240 steps in a minute, or three times a second. Still can't get a grasp on his quirk. Anyway, all that matters is I beat Yeyarazu. She couldn't create anything that could have helped her in this department, so this came down to pure skill. She got 72 in a minute. I got 83 in a minute. After was everyone else's attempt at the ball throw. Yeyarazu created a cannon and fired. She got 2. 3 kilometers. While the brown-haired girl, Achako Yuraka got a score of infinity. Wow, awesome. Afterwards was sit-ups, seated toe touch, and lastly the long-distance run. Hey, why won't it work? Yeyarazu asked as she tried to start up her bike. Damn it, it's a she, and here. I said as I reapplied the spark plug. Without the spark plug your motorcycle is good as useless. Why you sabotaged my motorcycle? She asked. Yes, I replied as I started it back up again. W-Y, she asked. Because your family ruined my store New Leaf, in a stint for us to give in to their demands. I told her, I'll never forgive them, but I want to beat you fair and square. I ran off before she could reply. She beat me, but I think I got ahead of her in the end. Mr. Aizawa flashed our scores with a hologram device. First, Izuku Midoriya second, Momo Yeyarazu third, Shoto Todoroki fourth, Katsuki Bakugu fifth, Tenya Ida sixth, Fumikage Takoyami seventh, Mizo Shoji eighth, Mashiro Ajiro ninth, Ijiro Kirishima tenth, Mina Ashido eleventh, Achako Yuraka twelfth, Koji Kota thirteenth, Rikido Sato fourteenth, Suyu Asui fifteenth, 
Yuga Ayama 16th, Hantasiro 17th, Denki Kaminari 18th, Kaiwuka Jiru 19th, Hagakir Toru 20th, Minor Reminder Mission Accomplished. Oh and I was lying, no one is going home, Mr. Aizawa said. I expect it as such, but I feel terrible knowing that the only reason I got that far was because of Light and Rob. Especially Rob, it was unfair for him the most. Anyway, after that Mr. Aizawa told us to grab the syllabus and read it over before walking the way. And after that my other introductory classes came around. Principal Nezu told me that my analyses of 1A's quirks is due tomorrow, as well as what I can expect from our business course lesson. After that Power Loader came in to tell me that we're going to have support course lessons in the support lab. He also wanted to see Rob's upgrades, but I told him he needed to recharge after the quirk assessment test. He understood. After that it was my other classes with Cementos, Midnight, and All Might. And after all of that, we were allowed to go home. And man, do I want a cup of coffee right now. We implore you to reconsider. I recognize that voice. We've been over this. How many times now? We will never give you new leaf. Dad said as I walked inside the back room. It also served as a meeting room, especially to the people who destroyed our business with lies and slander. You're making a mistake. Mr. Dirtbag Yeyarazu said. Out. Dad replied with fire coming out of his mouth. That only happens when he's mad. They took their things and left. When they were gone Dad sighed and collapsed onto the couch. They're a real pain in my back. Same, I replied. How is school? Dad asked. I beat their daughter in a quirk assessment test. Now that's the best news I heard all day. Dad said as mom and Uri came downstairs. Are they gone? Uri asked as she came out from behind mom. Yeah, for no ding ding I'll handle it. I said as I put on my apron and headed out. Welcome to its Momo Yeyarazu. Oh oh, good afternoon ma'am. Heap up the server talk. How may I help you? She pulled out her bag and handed me a packet. I would like to apply for the opening. Midori is POV I'm sorry what? I asked. I would like to apply for the opening. She reiterated. That's what I thought you said. I said. Now let me offer this as a rebuttal. That I ran around the counter and pulled her into a hug. You're hired. You uh. Shouldn't you? Oh I don't know. Interview her first. A voice. I recognize as moms asked. I let go of her. Hmm. You're right. I said as I stepped aside. Please come into the interviewing room. So. I'll start with why would you want to work here? Mom asked. Well I heard from your son, how my family ruined your store. She started, I may be my family's daughter, but I heavily despise their methods of maintaining the conglomerate. However, I don't have much power in terms of decision making. But helping New Leaf become bigger than my parents conglomerate is the only way I can think of to do that. Right now, you're hired. I yelled. Izuku, down. Mom said, fine. I muttered as I sat back down. Now, as I can tell from your resume, you have a PhD in chemistry. Mom asked, yes, got it when I was 11 years old. She said, I'm like her already. Dad commented, this is why you aren't a part of the interviewing process. She replied, aside from that you also have a minor in business. My parents wanted me to take over the conglomerate, but I don't intend to with my goal to become a hero. She said, so let me get your story straight. Mom said, you don't want to take over your parents' business because you want to be a hero, but you want to help us be bigger than your parents' conglomerate. Yes, she said, okay, go ahead. Mom said, you're hired. I exclaimed. Before I realized something. The initiation. The Aniti what? Yeyarazu asked but I rushed out. And quickly created the initiation drink. Here you go. I exclaimed handing her the cup. W what is this? She asked looking into the cup. Just drink it. Yeyarazu's POV okay. Okay Momo it's fine. It looks like a normal cup of coffee. But who knows what could be in it. Still, it's the initiation. And as such I have to abide by it. Bottoms up. I put my lips on the cup and drank some. It's, it's, so good. I muttered before drinking more. It just feels, so warm and so gentle. What is this? My special mocha drink. Midoriya said with a massive smile. We decided that should be the initiation drink if and when we got new workers. They said it was special and should be treated as such. I can see why. Yuraraka's POV I'm concerned about Yeyarazu, Ribbit. Asui commented. Yeah, Midoriya didn't seem to like her at all. Ashido responded. The girls and I have met early to have a meeting. We had become friends after the assessment test. Girlfriends and all that. Something about the Yeyarazu conglomerate. Jiru voiced in. Either way. I don't like I I believe the best course of action is to make a flower shop. Oh it's Mido I agree. It does fit with the coffee shop bakery hybrid. Wait. Is that? Slam yeah. The calm atmosphere and the nice presence of flowers will attract Custo um. What? I yelled out. The pair looked towards us one was shocked. Another. Midoriya was confused. What? Do you not like the idea? He asked. No not that. What are you two doing? Ashido exclaimed. Yeah, didn't you two hate each other? Tori yelled as well. Oh I just hated her parents, and by association, her. 
Midori explained. But she wanted to work for us and now she's my friend. What? He asked. Nothing. But yuck for you. I asked. His family owns a small coffee shop and bakery. Gayarazu explained. But it'll be big you'll see. He exclaimed. And he told me that my parents nearly ruined his business in a slimy attempt to get it for themselves. She added. Wait. But they're your parents. Shouldn't you not talk about them like father loving parents? But in the business world, they'll do whatever it takes to stay ahead. She explained. And they saw my parents' company of New Leaf as a threat to their uprising coffee division. Midoriya explained. Hold on a minute, Ribbit. Sue said, you're here to be a hero. And yet you're talking about a business. Yes, Midoriya said. So why are you here then? Shouldn't someone like you be in the business course? She asked. And what is that supposed to mean? Midoriya asked. She's talking about your quirklessness. A cold voice behind him said, Todoroki. I didn't even hear him open the door. And what exactly do you mean by that? Midori asked, sounding more angry. Just saying. Without your bird and your robot you wouldn't have gotten anywhere close to your first place and without your god-given powers you wouldn't even be here in the first place. Midori countered. And so what? We can still beat you how much you willing to bet on that? Midori asked which silenced Ashido. 10 million yen. Todoroki voiced. But that's not your own. Midori replied. Midori. Yeyarazu said. With that money we can finance the flower shop expansion. He said, and I know I can beat him, because he hasn't seen anything yet. I know what he has up his sleeve, his bat and his frying pan. But, judging by his confidence, he has a lot more I haven't seen yet. Midoriya's POV it's time. I didn't expect it to come so soon. But here it is. Battle training. All Might burst into the door declaring we are having battle training. And brought out our hero costumes because looking good is an integral part of being a hero. My costume wasn't super flashy just something my mom and dad threw together. Defensive, light and very green. A brief explanation is that it's a baggy combat suit, with Kevlar padding on my chest and legs. I also had the legendary bat and holy fry pan strapped to my back and waist. I also had straps that hold my secret weapons for this combat exercise. Once we got our costumes we were told to go to training ground beta, and once we got out of the long tunnel I took a good look at everyone's costume wait a minute. Yeyarazu, what is that? I asked as she looked at her outfit. It's my hero costume. She said with honesty, more like a lack of a costume. I exclaimed as I poked her in the exposed belly. There is no protection. What if some street thug shot you in the chest? You would die. In this day and age no hero dies by guns anymore. This is horrible, but I need exposed skin to use my quirk. She rebutted. I sighed and opened the fourth pouch and pulled out a capsule. Thank goodness dad is friends with David Shield, or else this would be a pain to carry. I pushed the button and revealed a cloak. Here, put this on. How will this resist gunshots? Yeyarazu asked as she put it on. Simple, Rob. I yelled out. Beep beep. He beeped as she pulled out his laser. All Might stood at attention. Young Mai PV fired the laser at Yeyarazu. And there was no damage to the cloak. H huh? She asked as she looked at the impact area. Nothing. That cloak is special, one of a kind. While not indestructible, it's pretty dang hard to destroy. And should it get damaged the suit will regenerate in about a day due to special nanomachines. We tried to shorten the time it takes to regenerate but couldn't without sacrificing some of the defenses. I explained. B but why give it to me? She asked. Because I don't want to lose my co-worker. I said. Anyway with that you can create your stuff without having so much exposed skin. It also helps with secrecy. I. Thanks. She said as she looked at the cloak. You even got my color. It was a 1 in 10 million chance. Hey, 10 million. That means I'm destined to win the money. I said. Not that I need destiny anyway. Huh. You're not going to beat him Deku. Bakugu yelled. I ignored him because All Might reined the conversation back. Ahem, now before we continue, we have a special announcement from our esteemed principal. All Might introduced as Principal Nezu walked up. Good afternoon students. Now it has come to my attention that some of you have made a competition. Now here at UA competitions are an integral part of learning. And as such, we shall honor that competition. Would Todoroki and Midoriya please step up? He said as we stepped up. Principal what are you doing? Now this exercise will be a pair exercise consisting of a hero team and a villain team. Now which one of you I want to be the villain team? I said. You don't even know what it entails. Todoroki said. If it gives me a building immediately then it doesn't matter. I said. I approve. Principal Nezu said. But since you chose the role first, Todoroki gets first pick of an ally. I pick Yeyarazu. Todoroki said. I expected that. He probably thinks Yeyarazu has some sort of information on me and my weapons. As much as I wanted to tell her about them along with my plans for New Leaf, she said she had to leave right after the interview. Turns out that was the best possible outcome for me. Very well, Midoriya. Principal Nezu asked. I don't need one. I said. I know you don't. But take one so we can balance out the teams. Principal Nezu said. 
Fine, I said as I looked at the others. Koda. He looked at me shocked. I approve. Principal Nezu announced. All Might you may explain the exercise now. Very well. All Might yelled before pulling out a script. Basically heroes are tasked with capturing the villains with capture tape or capturing the weapon. The villains are tasked with capturing the heroes or defending the weapon for 15 minutes. After the explanation was over All Might led us over to the first building. He told us that we should embody what it means to be a villain and he would stop the match should things get hairy. After that we headed up to the weapon's location. I took a deep breath. It's showtime. Todoroki's POV you don't know anything. I asked. No. All he told me was his plans for New Leaf. Nothing about his equipment aside from the ones we know about his bat and his pan. She explained. Well doesn't matter. I said as All Might yelled that we could begin because we already won. I said as I placed a hand on the wall. I don't want the money. Just want to show the others that I am the best one here. I have to be the best one here. Stay out here. I'll be back. Once the building was frozen over I headed inside. After checking all of the rooms I made it to the fifth floor and found Midoriya alone struggling to get out. It's rather comedic. Sorry. I apologized as I dodged a swing from his golden bat. Told, so gauche. But we're in completely different league BZZT I pulled my hand back once a purple force field enveloped the weapon. What did you think? I think my acting deserves an Oscar. I turned to see Midoriya. Smiling. Why are you smiling? In case you haven't noticed, you're stuck to the ground. I said, I know, but you're running out of options. He said, I only need one option. To freeze you in Koda. I said, and what would that do you? He asked as I stopped. The objective is to use the capture tape, because it's supposed to represent those quirks oppressing handcuffs police officers used to capture villains. Okay, your point. I asked, okay, think of this as a real-life scenario. Midoriya stated, say you froze me right here and now. Your options would be to drag me out of that door or throw me out the window. If you drag me out the door you have to carry me down five flights of stairs. Rob and Koda are nowhere to be found. So without that information you could be dragging me into a trap. Say you throw me out the window there are two outcomes with that plan. The ice breaks and I escape, or I die. And a hero killing a villain. Sounds like something your dad would do slam don't. Come up or me. 2. High click checkmate. I said. Bang young T-O-D-O-R-O-K-I. All Might yelled as I staggered back and felt my stomach. No blood, but there's this. I pulled it out of my body. A needle. Tranquilizer dart. Midoriya said. Drowsy. Last ten minutes. He added. No. I. Can't. Midoriya's POV once he collapsed onto the floor All Might talked to me on my earpiece. Young Midoriya, what was that? All Might asked. Trank gun. I said. I made it during my support session. I want that ten million. Principal Nezu said he allows it. And is laughing. All Might said sounding. Rather scared. Okay. I said as I smashed the ice with the legendary bat and captured him with the tape. However, as I got close Yeirazu was yelling into his earpiece. Todoroki. Todoroki are you there? She asked. I took the earpiece out of his ear. He's unconscious. Just you versus Koda and I what do you got? She exclaimed as All Might appeared onto the announcer. Young Todoroki and young Yeirazu have been captured. The villain team wins. He yelled. Nice job Koda. Nice job Light. I praised before hoisting Todoroki over my shoulder. Time to debrief. Now, I do believe that young Midoriya is the MVP of this match. All Might said. Yeah, he took out Todoroki. Kirishima said. Yeah with his force field. That's not fair. Ashido pouted. If he would have fought Todoroki one on one he wouldn't have won I did. I replied. Yeah, but without your gadgets. Kaminari replied. Young Kami no. All Might let him finish. I said. W well, your gadgets are. Unfair. Kaminari asked now unsure of himself. So you're saying that gadgets, that I made myself mind you, are unfair. But powers that you all got by luck and genetics isn't. I asked. W well that's exactly what you said. And exactly what Asui and a lot of you think. I said. Which made everyone shift uncomfortably. So you have no physical right to say that my gadgets are unfair. Because I had to work my butt off to create them. And you all were gift wrapped your quirks. So what? Are you jealous of your lack of a quirk? Bakugu asked. No, I said simply, I was heartbroken as a kid, and the bigoted bullies in primary and junior high were complete jerks, but I eventually learned that I don't need a power to be great. Having a power to hone, along with all the other stuff I planned to do, would be a waste of time. Now that's exactly how I feel. I said, so if you think I'm below all of you because I don't have a quirk, then you're exactly what sickens me about this society. Now that's over the lie is it? This time the principal asked which silence data, because I can assure you, Mr. Midoriya is the same if not more of a hero than any of you, not just because of his intellect, but his quick thinking, his planning, and above all else, his dedication and drive. There is a reason why he got the top scores in not only the hero course exam, but the support and business course exams. What? Everyone exclaimed. You can get into more than one. Bakugu exclaimed. Correct. He noticed this and leaped into action. 
It's about time I introduce you to the sole student of class 1 I am, Izuku Midoriya, Principal Nezu said. I, I would have appreciated it if you left that secret, I muttered. But why? Why do you need to do all of them? Toru asked, so I can take over New Leaf. I responded simply, which quieted the whole class down. New Leaf has been my life, the place I would go to whenever I needed a pick-me-up from school. In New Leaf our motto is the place where you can be a new you. Of course our reputation has been dragged through the mud by those who shall not be named. But it's my duty to restore New Leaf to its former glory and take it beyond, as well as become the first quirkless person to be a pro hero, as well as become the symbol of peace. Okay that's an admirable string of goals to have, young Midoriya. All Might said while clasping my shoulders, quirk or no quirk, you have shown us incredible skill during this past month. I smiled, thank you All Might. That was all I could say on the matter. The other matches were going on, but in all honesty I couldn't care less. I was hoping they would be different from the bullies back at my old schools. But turns out I was Ro Midoriya. I turned to see, oh, hey Todoroki. He didn't say anything but bowed, you won. He stated, okay this is getting awkward fast. Why you don't have to apologize. But I do owe you 10 million yen. I'll bring it to you tomorrow. He said, H he was serious. How many students in our class are rich? Why you don't have to but I do have to. We made a bet didn't we? He asked, well yeah but then I will give you the money tomorrow. He said before walking away, but don't take it easy. I will beat you, using only my left side. T that was strange. But, I have 10 million yen to play with. But I feel bad about taking it, even if he was rich. Wait a minute. Good idea. I stepped outside and pulled out my phone. Hey, Mr. Uraraka. I asked. Oh Midoriya, how are you today? Mr. Uraraka asked. He is our main contractor. He and my dad go way back. He scratches our back we scratch his. Good, so I have a job for you. I said. Oh good. We've been a little strapped for funds lately. He muttered. Well this job is worth. I paused. We need funds for the actual flower shop. Seven million. I said. PFBBBT. He must have been drinking water on the other end. What? He asked. Honey what was that? That must be Mrs. Uraraka. Honey. Midoriya has a job worth seven million. He exclaimed. What? She exclaimed at about the same volume and pitch as Mr. Midoriya. W what could you possibly need? Mr. Uraraka asked. Just an expansion for New Leaf. We're planning on opening a flower shop. I explained. And you just want us to do that? Nothing else. He asked. No that's it. I said. D but why? That job is worth. About two million at most. Mr. Uraraka asked. It's a thank you for all you've done for us. I said. It's not much. But it should keep you on easy street for about a few months. Not much. Mr. Uraraka asked. Before he paused. Wait a second. Just how did you get that money? Oh that, I said. One of my classmates challenged me to a fight. He bet 10 million. He lost so I have 10 million to use on New Leaf. I'm saving 3 million for capital for the flower shop and the coffee shop, bakery hybrid. But we don't have the money right now. He's going to give it to me tomorrow. T that's fine. We'll start working on it tomorrow. Oh I can't wait to tell Achako. Bye and thank you Midoriya. He exclaimed. No, thank you. Bye. I said before hanging up. Man, playing Robin Hood is fun. You're POV man. What a day. I muttered as I slammed onto my bed. I need a na bring ha. Huh? Who oh dad? I picked up my phone and answered. Hi daddy Achako. We got a job 7 million. Dad exclaimed. W what? I exclaimed as well. I know right. It was from our old friends. The Midorias. We told you about them when you were younger remember? He asked. Midori oh shit. Language. Dad yelled. I am sorry. But one of my classmates last name is Midoriya. I muttered. Oh you know him? Dad asked. Yeah. We were just talking about how he shouldn't even be in the hero course because he's quirkless. And oh my god I have to go see him I yelled. Achako why beep I I have to go. What was his store called? New Leaf? Okay, it's not far. Just a train right away. I picked up my bag and took off. To New Leaf. Midoriya's POV and then he spat out his water ding ding oh a customer. Hi welcome to New I quote him sorry. A brown haired girl oh wait a minute. Oh you're Araka, how are you? I asked. Why you're not mad? She asked. Why would I be mad? I asked. B because the others said you can't do it, B because you're quirkless. The end. I agreed with them, but didn't say anything. And then you gave my dad the biggest job we've ever had. For three times the amount just because. She exclaimed. And she was crying, S.O. Sorry, stand up straight. I said as I walked over to her. H. Huh. She said as she stood up. Once she did I brought her into a hug. H. Huh. Want a cup of coffee and some cookies? I offered, it's on the house. W. Why are you so nice? I thought you would be angry. She exclaimed. Their words hurt, I'll admit. But here at New Leaf, we believe people can change. He said, opinions. Like people change. All it takes is one act of kindness. She looked at me. Before burying her face into my apron, H how are you so nice? She exclaimed while crying. I get asked that all the time. 
I muttered, for once I'm glad we barely get any customers, because this would be really awkward. She kept crying for a few minutes before she wiped her eyes and blew her nose on my apron. It was stained with tears anyway. H how can I repay you? Oh I know, I exclaimed, you can work for us. I'm sorry what? She asked, you can work for us. We can always use more hands. I restated. I, I said how could I repay you? How is giving me a job repaying you? She asked, by helping us around the store. With the new addition coming in soon we need all the help we can get. We were lucky to get this lot. It was expensive as heck, but now we have creative freedom to expand. I explained, I have big dreams for this place, but we have to start one step at a time. But with you here along with Yeirazu, the process will speed up immensely. So, please, shouldn't you? I don't know. Interview her first. Dad commented. She's the daughter of Mr. Yuraka. He'll put a good word in for her. I responded. All right, it's your funeral when your mother gets back. He muttered. So, I asked. I, I accept. She said. Awesome. I exclaimed. Then I remembered oh. The initiation drink. Yuraka's POV it tastes like. Kindness. Midoriya's POV all right. Let the first new leaf meeting commence. I exclaimed. Since I have class 1 I am all to myself, we established the classroom as the new leaf headquarters. Now that Todoroki has given me the money. To which Yeirazu put in a super secure impenetrable box. I said pointing to the metal box covered in locks and chains. We need to discuss how to budget the money. We have 3 million yen in capital after we spend 7 million of it on the expansion of the flower shop. Yeirazu stated. Speaking of, what do we name it? Yuraka asked. Name it. I asked. What do you call the coffee shop bakery hybrid? Yuraka asked. New Leaf? I asked. We don't really name the stores. We just called it New Leaf as an umbrella term. In fact this is the first expansion in our history. So you never thought about expanding? Yeirazu asked. Not before I popped up. I said. Mom and dad were content with keeping it a coffee shop. But humored my idea of expansion. And now here we are. But still. We need some names. Yuraka exclaimed. Well, we'll talk about that idea at a later time. For now we're talking about budgeting, and class starts in 10 minutes. Yeirazu said, Well the flower shop is a newer store, but flowers and plants aren't as expensive as ingredients and equipment for the bakery and coffee store, so a 2 to 1 split should suffice. 2 million to the coffee shop and 1 million to the flower shop. Yeirazu stated, Yeah, that makes sense, but we still need someone who is knowledgeable in the art of plants, as well as someone who is willing to supply the store. Yuraka said, someone knowledgeable in the art of plants. I muttered to myself, well none of us in Wana are in any way knowledgeable in that department. Wait a minute. What? Yeirazu asked. 1B. I know someone there who can help. I exclaimed, let's go. W8 Midoriya. 1B. I yelled as I slammed open the door. J-A-H. Some guy with weird eyes exclaimed, and turned himself into metal. Oh that's Tetsu Tetsu. W who are you? Someone. Oh there you are. I exclaimed as I walked over to the girl with green hair. Uh, H hello. She asked. Hi. Are you in any way knowledgeable in flowers? I asked. Uh. Bats and what's it to you? Tetsu Tetsu asked, getting in my face. What's going on oh? Hello Midoriya. Is it time for you to come into our class today? Mr. King asked. You know him. Everyone. Including Yuraka and Yeirazu asked. I don't know. I asked. Principal Nezu hasn't told me the schedule with the hero course. Mainly my schedule for support and business courses. I'm just here to ask Shizaki if she was knowledgeable in flowers. I said. You know her. Everyone yelled. You know me. Shizaki asked. Yeah. Anyway. We have a flower shop opening in about a week. But. We don't know anything about flowers. So we need help. I explained. Interesting. But Mr. Midoriya. It's time for business lessons. A voice I know all too well yelled behind me. P. Principal Nezu. I exclaimed. Biba. In fact. You're going to be late. Cementos. He asked as Cementos walked in and hoisted me over his shoulder. Cementos you Judas. I exclaimed. As Mr. Aizawa walked in. And you too, class is starting. He said as he wrapped his capture weapon around them and dragged them away with me. The bye. I exclaimed as we split off. Dang it. My prospect has been snatched from me by Principal Nezu's schedule. Fine. Lunch it is. And. Done. Hatsum exclaimed. This. Will be the best invention yet. Oh most definitely. I replied. Before the bell rang. But it's time for lunch. I need to get my newest worker. I yelled before speeding off. I was rushing towards the cafeteria. Only to hear light mumbling. It's coming from 1B's homeroom. Looking inside, I saw Shizaki looking deeply into a book. The Holy Bible. Hum. She hummed to herself as she scanned the page before turning it. I was confused, until I saw the sign on the door. Bible Club, join today. Wow, no one has joined except her. Which sucks because religions are cool. I'm sorry what? Did I say that out loud? Yes, yes you have. Shizaki replied. Dang it. But anyway, you think religions are cool. 
She asked, yeah, I said as I walked over to the desk next to hers. I don't follow them by any means, but they're cool to learn about. In fact my dad brought me a copy of the Bible from his time in the States. It was a bit hard to read at first, but I learned. Her eyes lit up, and no one has ever taken an interest in the religions of the pre-quirk era. I follow Christianity, as does my family. That's cool, I exclaimed. I just love learning about them. Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, they're just so interesting you know. They have so many things to do, so many taboos, and I just want to learn all of them. My sentiments exactly, she exclaimed. Most of the student body view religions as just extra sets of rules and lose interest in media, which is extremely narrow-minded. We both exclaimed. Oh, that reminds me. She stated after a few seconds of silence, you said something about a flower shop. Oh yeah, I forgot. I said, my store, New Leaf is expanding to have a flower shop. However, we have zero knowledge about flowers. So you believe I would hold such knowledge? She asked. Yeah. So do you? I asked. I know a thing or two. She said. Great. I exclaimed. But, there is always a but. My parents own a flower shop as well. And I'm currently their only employee. She said. Oh, so I apologize. But I cannot join your new leaf. She said. Disappointed, but that's fine. I exclaimed. I can just learn the stuff on my own. I see. She said. But, I would still like to join your Bible club. I'm sorry what? She asked. Yeah, I exclaimed. I can only research so much, and hearing the views of someone else will help. If you'll have me of cur yes. She exclaimed as she pulled me into a hug. I am happy to have you. Girl hug me. No, calm down. She's just happy that someone is joining her club. I returned the hug, but then the alarm blared. A level 3 security breach? We have to evacuate, come. Shizaki said. I nodded and followed her down. Turns out. It was the demons of the world, also known as the public media, storming the gates of Normandy to get an interview. The police soon arrived and handled the situation. But something seems off. The press wouldn't destroy a gate that is meant to protect students, or else their reputation would be as ruined as the gate they destroyed. Which means, someone did it for ulterior motives. Once we were ushered back to our classrooms, I was told that I would be joining not only Class 1A but also Class 1B for a joint USJ training session. I've got a bad feeling about this. In fact, I think we need to bust it out. I pulled out my phone and dialed my partner. Hatsum, I asked. Midoriya, what's wrong? She asked. Nothing, but I think something will be wrong soon. Can you get Project Alpha ready? I asked. Okay, I'll get that ready for you. She said. Thanks, I said as I hung up. I hope to all that is good we don't need it. I have something to ask you Midoriya. Basui said. Yes, I asked. You seem stressed. She said. Because I am stressed. Probably because we're doing rescue training. Can't really do much without a quirk. Ignore them Izuku. We have bigger problems to deal with. Whomever broke into Yua will probably attack us at the USJ. Even with Project Alpha, Light, the Legendary Bat, the Holy Fry Pan, Rebellion, and Ebony and Ivory who knows how we can deal with them. Hell for all I know they could be weaklings hoping to make a statement and showing off all I can do would be a death sentence. And all of them probably don't know it's Kami M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-A. What? I snapped. Answer the question. Don't care, I said as I looked at Yuraka and Yeyurazu, if anything. I'm saving them first and foremost. But stop messing around, we're here. Mr. Aizawa said, focus up. Yes sir. 13 is leading this along with Mr. Aizawa and Vlad King. 13 was giving a lecture about quirk safety and how they can be used to kill. But I had other plans. A purple swirl appeared at the plaza, it's showtime. Light, survey the area. She nodded and took off. Once she was gone I pressed my earpiece, initiate Project Alpha. Beep BBZZT the communications were cut off, but I got my message through. Midoriya, what's hap villains? I said as I pulled out my legendary bat and holy fry pan, and then I began walking towards the stairs. Midoriya, get back before I can respond. Light landed on my shoulder. Koda, translate. She says there are 30 of them in each area. He signed. Well those I don't care about. For now I need to take down the ones in the plaza. I said, what's this I? Mr. Aizawa asked, you, stay here. In what? I asked Mr. Aizawa. From what I can tell that purple mist guy is the one who can warp people anywhere. Their plan is to spread us out and pick us off. And taking on the 50 plus villains in the plaza is a better alternative. Mr. King asked. Yes, I said. Because I'm more comfortable on solid ground than in the rain, in a flood, in a fire, and in unstable ground. But this conversation is getting us nowhere. I exclaimed as I turned back towards the villains. Yeirazu, Yuraka, Kota, Shizaki. I asked. Yes, Yeirazu spoke for those four. Out of everyone here. I care about you for the most, I said, so it would make me really happy if you stayed alive. And then, I ran down the stairs, much to the staff and the others yells to stop. I have to buy Rob time. So, a small fry wants to take us all on. One female villain scoffed. 
We don't know his quirk, so don't underestimate him. Especially since he came down here a lawn slam Midoriya. When we get out of this, we're having a talk. Mr. Aizawa said, sounding extremely angry. But now isn't the time to think about that. I'll handle the long-range fighters, you handle everyone else. Got it, I said as we stood back to back. Ha, huh? alright kid, I'll take you on. One of them yelled as he rushed at me. He has four legs, speed and kicks most likely. However, I said as I dodged one of his kicks, cripple one and he goes down. I said as I swung my legendary bat at his ankle as hard as I could, giving off a loud cracking sound as he fell over, leaving him open to be knocked out with a strong blow to the head. He'll be fine. They're just small-time villains. They are worried about quantity over quality. I told Eraserhead as he took out 15 other villains as I told him that. Makes sense. He replied as he stopped using his quirk, resulting in his hair falling back down. But still, what are they here for? What do they have to gain from throwing away pawn villains? A message, sure, but at the cost of this many pawns. No, killing, most likely. But who? That big guy is probably their weapon. But if they were after any old pro then he wouldn't be necessary. Unless, All Might, I said, which got Mr. Aizawa's attention. They want to kill All Might. Impressive. The blue-haired hand villain said, We are here to kill All Might, but he's not here. He said as he raised a hand, causing the other villains to stop and move out of the way, as the muscle villain started to walk towards us and the mist villain to disappear, but since he's not here, we'll have to deal with you too. The muscle villain then disappeared, only to reappear right in front of us. He's fast. Now who is first? I I will, I said. Midoriya. Mr. Aizawa said. I'll be fine, I said. Against that. And you don't even have a quirk, Mr. Aizawa exclaimed. I shook my head and gripped the holy fry pan on my right hand. Quirks would weigh me down anyway. J. Kahaha. He laughed as the muscle villain punched Mr. Aizawa away. Very well, if you have a death wish. Namu, get him. G R I N A A H H H. He roared as he pulled back for a punch, but I blocked him with the pan. I skidded back a few meters, but the pan withstood the force. What? Is that the best you got? I asked as I rushed after the Namu. H M P H. Not bad, kid. You might have some merit. Still weak though. The hand villain exclaimed as the Namu started getting serious. I took a swing at it, only for it to dodge my attack, knock the pan away, and grip my neck. Now Namu, kill B-O-O-O-M we are here. We, the hand villain asked as the Namu let me go. He he, it's here. I said, what's here? Mr. Aizawa asked as he hobbled towards me. Ladies and gentlemen, I exclaimed as I heard something jump into the air. The moment we've been waiting for, slammed the pride of you a high. And the greatest invention yet by myself and my partner. Fwoosh Rob. Alpha Mode. As well as I. Slam All Might. Creator, are you alright? Rob asked. Fully functional voice acting. Along with a durable and light body. I'm fine Rob. And I'm glad to see Project Alpha is a resounding success. I said. This is thanks to you and Hatsu. He replied. Thanks to you too I am now beautiful. That's right, young Rob. All Might said as he got ready. Because we are here to fight. Young Midoriya, you get back and survey the area. The gas villains spread your classmates around excluding some from 1A and 1B. I'll get a status update on them. I said as I turned towards the stairs and began running. Once I was a safe distance away the battle began. Sounds of fists colliding and bodies slamming echoed throughout the USJ, but I didn't look back. I have faith in All Might, Mr. Aizawa, and Rob. They will win. What happened? I asked as I rushed towards the others. The door was blown open probably from All Might and Rob's entrance. Everyone was as scattered. A short girl with a brown bob haircut, Kanoko Komori, stuttered as light landed on my shoulder. Thank goodness Koda is still here. She says that all of the other students are stranded in the other areas fighting off villains. Yeirazu is at the mountain zone, Shizaki is at the fire zone, and Yuraka is at the landslide zone. He signed. What about everyone else? Ashido asked. They're scattered as well they are all currently fighting off villains. He signed. Go beyond. Slam plus ultra. I turned to see All Might blasting the muscle villain away. And Rob unleashing a massive laser beam incinerating it. Leaving no trace of it ever existing. Hatsum clearly went overboard with it. Once the big bad guy was taken care of. All Might rushed towards the hand villain to stop him. However, the mist villain warped himself and the hand villain away before he could catch them. However, he swiftly took out all of the villains at the plaza. Creator. I turned to see Rob rushing towards me. Rob, the others are scattered around the different areas. We have to we, have to get them you mean. I turned to see, the entirety of the US staff. Sorry we couldn't be here Mr. Midoriya. But I'm glad you had the keen intellect to suspect something would happen. Principal Nezu said. Why you knew this would happen? Ashido asked. It was a hunch. I replied. That was the reason why I was so nervous on the bus. And I'm so glad everything worked out. The staff cleared out the remaining villains, and the other students were evacuated outside to safety. Midoriya, Yeirazu, Yuraka, and Shizaki rushed towards me. 
I'm so glad you're okay. Iraraka exclaimed. That was extremely reckless. Gayarazu yelled. Not true. Principal Nezu said which garnered the attention of everyone. He expected there'd be an attack. And he planned for this moment. Him walking towards the villains was all a part of his plan. Isn't that right Mr. Midoriya? It wasn't. Entirely a part of my plan. I said. You planned all of this? Everyone exclaimed. No, I just had a loose plan. I said. I didn't know how many villains there were. Nor did I know about the muscle villain. I just brought out the big guns just in case. Huh. Power Loader said as he looked at Rob Alpha Mode. So this is what you and Hatsum have been working on. Impressive. We had to keep it hidden. Rob is a part of my arsenal after all. I said as he deformed the helmet and flew out, deactivating the suit and causing it to then deform down into a small cube, to which I picked up and put it into my pocket. But the field test is a rousing success. But why did you rush into danger? Wasn't that dangerous? Isui asked. Sure it was dangerous. I said, but that's why I did it. Ribbit. She asked. A hero can't just twiddle their thumbs and hope a stronger hero comes. So I jumped into action and did all I could do. Fight and protect. I said, as far as I was concerned. The lives of my Nakamas came first. In Nakamas, Uraraka asked. Yeah, you're my allies, my crew. I won't let anything happen to you four. I said, and what about us? Kaminari asked. Anyway, I said ignoring Kaminari's statement. Now that everyone is okay, we should go back. Correct, Principal Nezu said. Now come along everyone, time to go back to UA. Everyone headed back. But Shizaki didn't walk as fast as the rest of us. That's concerning. Hey Shizaki, what's row you called me a Nakama? She said. Okay, what about it? I asked. But I told you I couldn't join you in New Leaf. She added. Okay, what about it? I asked again. T then shouldn't I not be one of your Nakamas? She asked. No, you should be. I said, because you're still my friend. And if you're my friend, then you're my Nakama regardless. B but I don't think about it too hard. I said, you'll give yourself a headache at this rate. <sighs> okay, she said. Now come on. The buses are going to leave us behind. I exclaimed. She smiled. Okay. Shizaki's POV mother. Father, I asked as I entered my home. Yes, Ibarra. Mother asked as she looked at me from her chair. I, I would like to resign. I said. <sighs> For whatever reason. She asked. Because, because who I want to help. My Nakama's shop. I said, your Nakama. She asked. Yes, I found a friend in Yue. He has interests in religions. Mainly for learning the diversity of religions. He wasn't saying that to convince me to join. His interests in genuine. However, he still wants me to work for his flower shop. His store is opening. I said, then why don't you go? Dad asked as he walked in. E because we're short-handed in our store actually. We hired two more workers whilst you were at school. Mom said, I'm sorry what? I asked. We want you to focus on your studies, or find somewhere you can be happier. Dad said, now go work for your Nakama. I know he is teasing, but I nodded and rushed out. To New Leaf. Ding ding hello welcome to New Shizaki. Oh Yuraka, I am here to apply for the position in the flower shop. I said, how many workers is Izuku going to bring? A man I assumed to be his father exclaimed, don't be like that dear. A woman with green hair exclaimed as she walked towards me. Must be his mother come this way for the interview process. I'm moderately terrified. Midoriya's POV you drank it. I exclaimed. Why yes. Is something wrong? All Might asked. Yes. That stamina potion wasn't complete. It was a prototype and has numerous side effects. I exclaimed. What kind of side effects? All Might asked. Well, there's itchiness. All Might started scratching himself. Sore throat. CHH KMM. He coughed. Perfuse sweating. Why is it hot in here? Extreme thirst. All Might picked up his water jug and downed it in one sitting. And lastly, intense drowsiness, slam snore and All Might passed out. Well there's that, Mr. Aizawa said before looking at me. But next time you have a hunch about villains attacking, tell me. Gee got it sir. I replied. Now go home and rest. Principal Nezu said. Yes sir. Ding ding I'm Ho Shizaki. I asked as I saw Shizaki, wearing a new leaf apron. Meet your newest co-worker. Mom exclaimed. But I thought you couldn't. I asked as I walked over to her. Mother and father hired new workers. They allowed me to work here. She said, awesome, I exclaimed, but then realization sunk in, but the flower shop won't be up and running for at least a week. Man, chatting with Yuraka and Yeyarazu wasn't this awkward. Well I should be going, I shall come by at 9 tomorrow, she said as she took off her apron. Oh okay, bye, I exclaimed as she left. Once she was gone I collapsed onto an empty chair. So, any more employees you want to tell me about? Mom quipped, no, none I know of yet. I replied, the way you said yet, worries me. She said back. I know isn't it great. Midoriya's POV what to do in my day off. I asked myself. The school gave us a day off to recuperate from the villain attack. Hiroraka, Yeyurazu, and Shizaki didn't come in today. Well more so I told them not to come in today. 
They needed a break after fighting off villains all day yesterday. And it's not like we get much customers anyway. Just our loyal customers mainly. Uh, anyway what do I do tug tug Izuku? Iri was tugging my shirt. Oh Iri, I exclaimed as I kneeled down to her level. What's wrong? I asked. Nothing, just don't know what to do today. She said. Well I don't know I Izuku. Mom called out as she handed me. A plastic wrapped plate of cookies. Can you deliver these too? You know who? Wait, really? I asked. What's the occasion? It's her birthday. That's all she needed to say. I'm on it. I exclaimed. Oh I should make her my mocha as well. Iri want to come with me? Um, yes. She exclaimed. Well go get dressed. I'll work on the mocha. I said. Okay. Excuse me, Mrs. Todoroki. You have a pair of visitors. The nurse said as she stood aside for us. Auntie Ray. I exclaimed. Oh Izuku. She said before looking at Iri. Who is that? Oh my little sister Iri. I said before looking at her. Iri, introduce yourself. She walked away from my legs and bowed. Hi, my name is Iri Midoriya. Nice to meet you. I'm Rei Todoroki, a close friend of your mother and father. She greeted before looking at me. So when did this happen? Um, four weeks ago. I said. So adoption? She asked. Yes, but mom loves her so it works. I said with a smile. Oh, almost forgot. I said as I handed her the cookies and mocha. Happy birthday. Iri's eyes widened as she pulled out a folded up piece of paper from her pocket. H happy birthday. It was a little card made of construction paper, makers, and glitter. We stopped by the arts and crafts store on the way here. Aunt Ray smiled and took all three of the gifts. Thank you. Hum. Oh, your son is in my class. I said. She looked at me shocked. Oh. How? How is he? She asked. He's rather rude. I said bluntly. Oh, I apologize. She said. Why? It's not your fault. I said before pulling up a chair. This is all that horrible endeavor's fault. His thirst for power and being number one single-handedly ruined everything he touches. So it's not your fault don't think that it is. She didn't respond. So I decided to keep going. So anyway he was rather rude. But then again 90% of my class is extremely rude. Saying I shouldn't be a hero because I don't have a quirk. So I made a bet with him worth 10 million that I can beat him in battle training. You did. She exclaimed. Yeah. And with that I'm making a flower shop for New Leaf. I said. Oh you won? She asked. Yeah. Took a little bit of finesse but I won. I said, but even with beating the third strongest student they still think I'm weaker than them because I'm quirkless. So I just gave up trying to impress them and decided to move on with my life. And that's what I respect about you. You, always move on. She muttered. Well why don't you? I asked. It's not that simple. She replied, I can't just walk away. Yes you can. I said, just join mom, dad, Iri, and I. My mom's a lawyer she can break you out. Legally. E but what about your store's reputation? Fighting the number two hero the store's reputation has already been ruined by the Yairazus. So what's a few more hits going to do? I asked. Completely destroy it. She said, if you lose, and with his resources you will lose, then your store will probably be shut down and your hero career would be destroyed before it began. But it's worth it for my family. I exclaimed. Give it time. She said calmly before placing a hand on my shoulder. I'll be fine. You, Iri, Inko, and Hisashi remembering it's my birthday today is helping me enough. So don't worry about me. Okay. But I'm not happy about it. I said. I know. But it's the best thing you can do. She said. But enough about me. Tell me how's New Leaf doing. Awesomely. I exclaimed. I said 90% of my class are complete jerks. But the other 10% are nice people. In fact two of them wanted to work in New Leaf. I thought the school doesn't allow students to have jobs outside of school. Ray asked. Oh Principal Nezu doesn't care. So long their grades are fine they can do whatever they want. I said, anyway that's not the crazy part. We hired the daughter of the Yeorazas. Really? She asked shocked at that statement. I know right. I asked. I told her how her family ruined our business and now she's working for us to atone for it. And then once I got the money another classmate joined the crew. Turns out she was the daughter of our main contractor. She was grateful for me giving them 7 million yen for a job that costs about 2 million. So much so that she asked what she could do to make up for it. And I said well come work for us. She was confused but accepted anyway. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There was this one girl who is also a faithful Christian. I found her reading the Bible and we started talking about how religions have heavily decreased in fellowship with the uprising of quirks, but we called that a waste of culture. So we were talking, and after the USJ incident with villains speaking of, are you alright? She asked. Oh oh yeah, I'm fine, and all of my nakamas are fine. So we're fine. I exclaimed. So anyway, she talked to her parents, because she didn't want to work for us because she was the sole worker in her parents' flower shop. But as it turns out, her parents hired two more workers so she is now working for us now. Is that so? She asked. Yeah. We're growing strobezzbzz it's a text. And it's from mom. Number one mom. We have a rush of customers. Come home quick. Mom says we got a rush of customers. I told Auntie Ray. Oh, well go and help her then. 
She said, right, come on Uri, we gotta help mom. I said, okay, bye auntie. She exclaimed before we rushed out towards the train station. We'll get her out. Ray's POV he will be the symbol of peace one day. I said as I took a sip of his world famous mocha. I can, taste the warmth and kindness. He will most definitely become the symbol of peace. Midoriya's POV all might. I asked as I walked into the store. Oh, good afternoon young Midoriya. All Might said as he took a sip of coffee. I was in the neighborhood and decided to have some of New Leaf's coffee, and I must say, it's very delicious. T thank you for the compliment sir. I exclaimed with a bow, but All Might laughed. Well I must be off. He exclaimed before walking towards me. I would like to talk to you after class tomorrow. He whispered before slapping my shoulder. Now good luck with the rush young Midoriya, but I must be off. Now, watch how a hero exits. Like he's got somewhere to be. He yelled before rushing off leaving me with a rabid fanbase along with info hungry press. 3, 2, 1, view, how are you related to All Might? Are you his sidekick? Divert the expectations. Fast. H he's a sponsor. Dad exclaimed. And not what I was going for. A sponsor. A newscaster asked. Yes, he loves our coffee. And comes here on his off days for a surge of energy. Today is one of those rare occasions where he comes in during his work hours. He explained. I smiled and walked towards him. What are you doing? I whispered, chilling customers. He replied, before looking at the customers. Now who wants to order something? Shilling, sucks. Word soon got out that this place was All Might's favorite coffee shop and soon many people came flooding here. Even with the Yeyarazos destroying our reputation, no one can raise a hand to the symbol of peace. But still the profits we made will go a long way towards our next expansion. But do people have to be so rabid? Like seriously, Sai remind me to get more cash registers. That wasn't so bad huh? Dad asked. You were in your workshop during all of this. I exclaimed. I had to deal with them on my own. Yeah, but look at all of these tips. He exclaimed pointing towards the tip jar. Jars? Yeah, I'll add them to the money safe later. I said as I closed up the store. But one thing is for certain. Am I ever regretful that I let your Araka, Momo, and Shizaki take a day off? Young Namidoriya is here. All Might yelled as he barged into my classroom of 1am. Oh All Might. I said as he walked towards me. I would like to talk to you about something. If that's alright with you principal. He asked. Oh it's quite alright. I would like to hear this conversation as well. Principal Nezu said. Very well. All Might said as he entered the classroom and closed the door. Now, it's time I told you something, secretive. Holy info bomb. All Might told me the origin of his power. One for all how it's a power stockpile quirk that has been passed down for eight generations. And now, he wants me to be the next wielder. And that's the very simplified explanation. Like 95% of the info shortened to that sentences. So, what do you say? He asked. I appreciate the offer All Might. It shows that you believe in my potential. I started. But I'm here to be the first quirkless hero. So I can show people that quirkless doesn't mean weak. So I must decline. I said. H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-
quirks are constantly evolving, so that excuse will be bought instantly. But that's an in my personal opinion. I don't like most of the other students. I said bluntly, they all counted me out because of my quirklessness, and they think I'm below them because of that. Even with me showing that I am capable of great things, they believe they're above me just because they have a flashy power. Melissa will not have that ideology, given the fact that she has been quirkless for the entire 18 years she's been alive. I said, but La Pista Resistance is her intellect. She's way more advanced than me in terms of intellect, given the fact that she's the daughter of Uncle Shield, that with her skill at inventing, and her athleticism, thanks to me, she is basically the female version of me, I said, and with that I am open to your rebuttal all night. I have no counter-argument, he conceded, then it's settled, but if you would like, I can call her up so you can talk to her personally, I offered, I, that would be best, Izuku, Melissa asked, hey Melissa, are you busy, I asked, classes are out, so no, why what's up, she asked, I am here to talk to my niece, all might yelled as he rushed into shot, Uncle Might, Melissa exclaimed, how are you, and when are you going to visit? As soon Melissa, but there is something I need to talk to you about. He said becoming serious now. Okay, she asked. All Might then told her about one for all, like how he told me. Oh okay, but why tell me all of this? Melissa asked. Because, young Midoriya believes you are a worthy successor. All Might said. Me, what about you? Melissa asked me. You're the one who is currently in UA, you're in the hero course, even when you're quirkless. But I know how much you want to be a hero. I said, Melissa, you're smarter, better in terms of mechanical ability, and equal to my athletic ability. You're just as good of a successor as I am. Well then why don't you want it then? Melissa asked, because I have something to prove. I said, I was told by many people and kids that I won't be a hero. Some even said I couldn't even be a police officer because of my quirklessness. Heck even my own classmates say I should just stick to business or support. But I told them that I'll be a hero without a quirk. Because I wanted to show the world that quirkless doesn't mean weak, genetics don't make people weak, their own minds makes them weak. That's why I don't want one for all. But what about your other classmates? She asked, in a simplified way. I don't like most of them, I said, and even if I did, one for all doesn't fit well with most of them and it's imperative we keep one for all a secret. How are they going to explain how one got electricity and super strength and speed, or with acid, or with explosions, or invisibility? You get my point, I said. So with me being quirkless, it would make a good cover for one for all. She implied. Yes, I said. I know I'm being selfish not abandoning my ideals to take this responsibility. And I'm being even more selfish dumping it onto you instead of swallowing my pride. But, I personally believe you are the best candidate I know. But know that it's all your choice. Fi, she muttered before looking up. I'll do it. I couldn't help but smile. Awesome. I exclaimed. But, what now? Melissa asked. I'm currently across the ocean in I island. I can barely be able to leave, even with our Christmas visits, it's paperwork hell for dad. Oh that won't be a problem, Principal Nezu said coming into frame, for you see, I have connections at I island, we can bring you in Wednesday at the earliest, but that's in two days, Melissa asked, I know, so you best start packing, Principal Nezu said, and now hold on, shouldn't my father be here to listen I heard everything, a voice said as Uncle Shield walked into view, D David, all might exclaimed, we're talking later, he said, as for you. I approve of you going to Yua why you are. But what about the shop? She asked. I'm sure Hisashi will give you the same amount of training I would give you. He said, so when was it? Wednesday. Yes sir, Principal Nezu said. Then you will see her by then. He said, now let's go Melissa, we need to get you packed. Why yes dad. Sorry, bye Izuku, bye Uncle Might. She exclaimed before signing off. I think you're in trouble. I said, yeah, I think I am too. After that interview I was told that the sports festival is coming up. And I am not going to be with one but my own class of one I am. Oh and I'm going to make a speech. I'm making a speech. I'm doomed. I told Yegarazu, Yuraka, and Shizaki. You will be fine. Shizaki said. Will I? I asked. Yeah, just be yourself. Yuraka cheered. However, what we have here is an opportunity. Yegarazu said. An opportunity. Shizaki asked. Yes, the business course is allowed to sell items at the sports festival. Yegarazu said. Oh, I exclaimed. Yes, we should have a new leaf stall there. Yeyurazu finished. That's an amazing idea. I exclaimed. But who would man it? Shizaki asked. We're all going to be competing, so none of us are able to help out the store. I can ask mom and dad if they could close down the store for the day. I said. There we go. Yuraka cheered. Not so fast. We still need a prova I approve of this idea. We all jumped at the sudden appearance of the voice. Key Principal Nezu. Yes, it is I, your esteemed principal. Here to announce that I approve of your idea of bringing New Leaf to the sports festival. He said. Well that works, I said. Now I need to convince my parents to close down the store for the day. It would also give Mr. Yuraka's crew a chance to work on the flower shop. 
However, a new voice, Mr. Aizawa, remember you still need to work on your training. We're being lenient with your work because you don't have a quirk to work on. But that doesn't mean you can slack off and drag those three down with you. Keep training, do I make myself clear? Yes sir. Two days have passed, and after tough training, it's time. Time for Melissa's arrival. I have everything prepped, for her. I cleaned up the guest room for her and everything. All Might was also kind enough to get her some training equipment for one for all training. The RRRM she's here. Ding ding. I'm he Melissa. I exclaimed as I tackled her into a hug. Hi. SNRK. Ha ha ha. She started laughing before ruffling my hair. Nice to see you cousin. And I am here to bring her home. All Might yelled lifting us up off of the floor. Let's take this somewhere more private shall we? Yes sir. Now, I do believe this should be secluded enough. All Might said before. Deflating. Um, is that supposed to happen? I asked. Uncle Might, did you not tell him? Melissa asked. I might have neglected to tell him. He responded. Uncle Might. Melissa yelled. I mean I know you got injured and all, but seriously. I asked. Wait you knew about what? All Might asked. Oh Rob told me. I said as Rob flew out of my hoodie pocket, he scanned you and saw your wound, and surmised that you had about a three hour limit. So I carried the stamina potion should we need you and you used up your time limit. Good thing I did or else we might have been doomed in the USJ attack. W well, yes, I got injured during a fight, and this is my true form. All Might said, hence why I need to find a successor, because my time is limited in this world. Well we found one, and now we need to train her. I said, exactly, hence why I brought you out here. All Might said looking at the trash dump that was once a beach, you see this place once was a beautiful beach front, but due to ocean currents and illegal dumping, it became a trash dump. So you want me to clean it? Melissa asked. Yes, All Might said, your body is capable of withstanding one for all, which is impressive don't get me wrong, but I injure myself whilst using it. She says, wait what? I asked, there was a reason why we were late. In fact All Might flew over to I Island to pick me up personally, and have a long talk with Dad. He's upset that he withheld this secret, but understood why. Anyway he examined me and said I was capable of holding one for all without it destroying my arms and legs. After the transfer and waiting a few hours we gave it a test run and my arm was shattered from the punch. You said she was able to withstand one for all. I said, yes I did. All Might said, but she broke her arm. So clearly while she can use one for all she is nowhere near the level you can use it at. I said, so what? Melissa asked, tone down the power output. I said, and spread it all over your body. Pressure is equal to force times unit area. So if you use a small amount of force in a large area, then it'll be less pressure. Melissa finished, a pressure I can manage. Add a girl. Now let's test out that theory. I urged. It took a little while, but we noted that as of right now she is capable of using 10% of one for all. As blonde-colored sparks surrounded her body, I it feels. Awesome. All Might laughed, as it should. It also took a little bit of time for her to get used to moving with the constant power usage. It's still awkward for her but she's learning. Now try rushing around to pick up trash. But shouldn't I do it without using one for all? Melissa asked. Quirks are like muscles. The more you use them the stronger they become. I said, so use them a bunch, and we can work out at home. That's the plan anyway. All Might said. Principal Nezu said that the only way you can be admitted into UA is if you place high in the sports festival. How high are we talking? I asked. At least the final 16. All Might said. H how do I do that? Melissa asked nervous about that. We use their lack of information. And our abundance of information to our advantage. I said with a smile. W what do you mean? Melissa asked. I just smiled at her. It's about time I use Principal Nezu's assignments to my advantage. You made what? All Might asked. Notebooks about the students of Class 1A and 1B. I said as I set them in front of All Might and Melissa, it was Principal Nezu's assignment. He wanted me to analyze everything about 1A and 1B. It was difficult to get info about 1B, aside from their quirks. But I have the complete dossiers of 1A, personality and all. I isn't this cheating? Melissa asked. No, I said simply. And you're backed into a corner here. You need all the help you can get, even with the progress you've made with one for all. But, and besides, knowledge is true power. And knowledge is something we have an abundance of. So we use it while we have the element of surprise. I said. Melissa looked at All Might, who shrugged. Principal Nezu made him analyze the hero course and let him keep his notes for a reason. Sigh so fine. She said as she took the one of one and opened it. Katsuki Bakugu, quirk, explosions. He secretes nitroglycerin as sweat and they allow him to create explosions at will. The higher the magnitude and power of the explosions, the more backlash is exerted on his arms. A way to counteract that is with his grenade gauntlets. They allow him to use massive explosions without repercussion, as well as allow him to passively store nitro sweat into his gauntlets to release a devastating blast. He's powerful and an intelligent strategist, but his biggest flaw is his quick-to-anger attitude. 
Rage well can make someone more powerful. Will cause them to lose control. Exploit that. He is susceptible to taunts and jabs at his power. She read aloud, W wow. Principal Nezu really hammered me down for those. I said, so study them, and work on the beach and you'll be in guaranteed. I, I'll do it. She exclaimed, all right, let's get to work. While Melissa isn't a student yet, she is still allowed into Yua to train one for all. So wait, you have a class all to yourself? She asked, yup. I replied, I aced the hero exam, the support exam, and the business exam. There wasn't a rule that restricted me to only one, so they made one I am. It's kinda embarrassing to have a class named after me. But that's super cool you have your own class, she exclaimed, even though it might be a tad bit lonely. Well yeah, but I have Midoriya, Rihio Uraraka, and Yeyurazu and Shizaki. I exclaimed, hello, who is this? Yeyurazu asked, oh, this is my cousin, Melissa Shield. I introduced, me slam Melissa Shield, and that's Mei Hatsum, my partner in the support course. I introduced as Hatsum rushed over to us. You're related to the Melissa Shield, daughter of David Shield? She asked, not related by blood. My dad's a close friend of Uncle Shield, and in turn, we became super close, cousins even. I said, hold on a minute. Yuraka spoke out, where's your bird? Bird? Melissa asked, oh you mean Light? I asked, Koda wanted to train with his quirk, and Light went with him, so that's why Koda is outside. Yeyurazu pointed out, yup, in rub. I said as he flew out of my open backpack, has just finished sleeping. Beep beep. He exclaimed as he hovered over to me. Wow, Melissa said as she looked at Rob. So small and yet it has three propellers. And a strong laser beam that can pierce giant robots. Uraraka exclaimed. Oh that I know about. Melissa said. You did? I asked. Yeah, your dad bragged about it to mine. She said with a smirk. Their rivalry has been extremely one-sided, but it's nice to see him still working hard. Yeah yeah. Not like you had the technological paradise that was I Island. I countered. Touche. She responded. So what? Is she going to be a student here? Yuraka asked. Don't know yet. She has her test in a few weeks. However, she is allowed to train here for it. Technically not a lie. Oh, okay. Yuraka exclaimed. So does that mean she might join you in class when I am? Shizaki asked. I don't know. I asked. If she does then it won't be I am anymore. It'd be M's. The Institute for Marine Mammal Studies. Melissa asked in a joking manner. Sure, we will be the Institute of Marine Mammal Studies. I said. Awesome. And. Finished. Melissa said as she dumped the last of the garbage onto the parking lot, and with a day to spare. She said as she wiped the sweat off her forehead. You did good. Eri, who wanted to come watch, cheered as she handed her a cold water bottle, to which she gladly took. I'll say. Something that would take a normal person about ten months took you less than two weeks. I said. Now you're ready for the sports festival tomorrow. Speaking of, how did your midterms go? Melissa asked, as if there was any doubt. I boasted, ace them all. I got the best score in my class. Congratulations. She asked. Thank you. I exclaimed. Now the best course of action is to have a bit of R&R. I suggest BH relaxation. That's actually a good idea. Melissa said. Good. Because I already invited Yeyurazu, Yuraka, and Shizaki. They should be here while it's so clean. Right now. I said as they walked down the stairs and onto the sand. But. I don't have any swimwear. Melissa said. Catch. I said as I tossed her a t-shirt and a pair of gym shorts. Wait, you're willing to give her your clothes? Yeyurazu asked. Yeah, we wear practically the same thing at home. I said, I prefer to wear clothes that are three sizes too big at home so they fit her perfectly. And I'm triple his height, so my clothes are about three sizes too big for him anyway. She teased. H hey. I exclaimed as she laughed. Well maybe you should grow more shorty. She said adding fuel to the ever-growing fire. Oh yeah, wanna go? I asked. She nodded. Oh yeah I am. Marie, bring it out. I said, be but it's heavy. She exclaimed, oh right, I'll get it. I said as I walked over to the pile of stuff be brought form home. I laid out a blanket and set a large watermelon on the blanket. I then brought two bats. All right, it's time. Oh yes, she said as she took a wooden bat. It's time. But isn't the watermelon game for couples? Uraraka asked. We busted out laughing, not the way we play it. We said in unison as we stood opposite ways from each other. All right. Three. I started the countdown. Two. She said after. One. We both said as we swung our bats at each other, creating a loud cracking sound. T they're fighting. Uraraka exclaimed. Home run smash. I yelled as I swung the bat with all my strength. Full counter. Melissa yelled back as she blocked my attack, causing sand to fly everywhere. What's wrong? Not using your quirk. I quipped as I ducked to kick her legs. She saw that coming and jumped over them. Huh. Like I needed to beat you. She exclaimed as she took two to dual wheel. I is that allowed? Yuraraka asked. 
Of course, no rules in the Battle of Melons. I exclaimed as I began blocking her dual bat barrage. Sigh this is super immature, right Shinoza HAH? I turned to see Shizaki rushing in with a bat in her hand. Shoot, Midoriya yelled as he jumped out of the way. Why you two Shizaki? Yeyurazu asked. Yes, I adore watermelon, she said as she gripped her bat. Now, let us do battle. A three-way free for all. Interesting, I said as I got ready. Yes, all right then, Melissa said as she whacked her bats together as a sign of dominance. Let us do battle. Thud 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 ha. Man that was tiring. I muttered as we laid in a perfect triangle. I agree, Melissa said. But this watermelon is delicious, Shizaki said. Or he does know how to pick them. I said, but do you two really fight over watermelon? Uraraka asked as she sat next to us. Oh we fight over everything. Melissa said, we'd fight over what Christmas special to watch. We'd fight over what to have for dinner. We fight over a lot of small things. We settle things with debates. But when things get really heated we'd wrestle it out. I said, and you'd always lose. She said, quick to point that out. First of all, I said, the record is 49 minus 53. Second you always cheat. Oh, and pray tell Izuku. She said, how do I cheat? I I said before clamping my mouth shut. Is it because you don't want them to know? She asked. No what? Uraraka asked. Absolutely nothing. Nothing, just the fact that Izuku is unbearably ticklish. She said smirking at the fact that she has dropped the vital information that could kill me. He's what? Uraraka said with a smirk equally devious. I I deny all ak usahhations. I exclaimed as Yeyurazu jabbed a finger into my side. Oh yes, he's ticklish. Yeyurazu commented. Well that's one less thing to worry about in the sports festival. Shizaki commented. In fact why don't we eliminate it right now? Uraraka asked. T this is mutiny. After spending the rest of the day running for my life, the sun started to set and my nakamas needed to go home. Bye. Uraraka exclaimed. See you tomorrow. Yeyurazu waved. Have a pleasant evening. Shizaki said as they headed home. Are you ready for tomorrow? I asked. Yes. Midori is POV all by myself. Don't wanna be all by my slam as who are you singing? Melissa asked. Yes, because I'm all by myself. I said, I'm not allowed into 1A's room. I'm stuck in 1IM. Well so am I Melissa said sitting next to me. But a white haired woman told me to give this to you. A Auntie Ray is here. I asked. Yes, she asked. Oh right, we haven't introduced her to Ray yet. Anyway she told me to tell you to give this to Shoto when you get the chance. I took the letter and put it in the loan locker. I'll give it to him during lunch break. So how are you feeling? I asked. Nervous as all get out. She admitted, a lot is on the line here. I know, I said, but I'll help as much as I can. Isn't that cheating? She asked. No, it's called making an alliance. I countered. And besides the others are fighting for publicity, you're fighting for admission. However, once you make it to the top 16 and into the final tournament, the alliance is disbanded. I expect you to fight to win once we get to that point. She looked at me, before smiling. All right, I'll take you on. In the finals, I asked as I extended a balled up fist. The finals, she responded as she responded with a fist bump. Will class 1 I am come to the field? Mr. Aizawa's tired voice said, let's do this. And finally, present Mike announced, the class consisting of the one who aced all three entrance exams, the one who is brains and brawn, the lone legend, class 1 I am, seems I'm not in your class yet. Melissa commented as we walked out, don't worry, you'll get in. I said as we walked with the others, 1 I am, one student from the general department, all of them, all three, he must have cheated or some shit like that. Ignore them, Melissa said. Oh I don't care, I said, as Ms. Midnight stepped onto the stage, in her hero costume. Now it's time for the student pledge, Midnight exclaimed. Would Izuku Midoriya step up onto the stage? Wish me luck, I said. Good luck, Melissa exclaimed as I stepped onto stage. I'll make this brief. I said, I got top scores in all of the entrance exams, as such I was placed into my own, soon to be shared, class of 1 I am, and let it be known, that I did this, while being 100% quirkless, gasps were heard in the stadium, that's right, I don't have a single power, and I'm proud of it, so watch me, watch me and let this be a reminder, that if a quirkless student can do this, then anyone can do it too, quirkless doesn't mean useless, and to the quirkless out there who were told or think that internally, I have one thing to say. Elapsum semel occasionum non ips potus de epiter reprehendir. I said before bowing, thank you for your time. Everyone was confused, but Melissa, Yeyurazu, and Shizaki understood what I said. Jupiter himself is not ever able to take back an opportunity that has slipped away, Melissa said. And in Latin too, impressive. I got it from a video game. I responded, and it felt fitting. She barked out a laugh, of course you did. Now with that let us begin the first match. Midnight exclaimed as a holographic screen popped up and started rolling and rolling, and it stopped. Tada. Accuracy test. I read aloud. 
All classes will participate in this challenge. The objective is to hit the targets spread around the stadium. You may use her quirks or use these, she said as a table appeared from the ground. Guns. Oh my god. Use whatever you deem fit. The closer to the center, the higher the point value. The top 42 contestants will advance to the next round, Midnight said. Izuku, you're smiling, Melissa said. I know, I'm excited. I've been waiting for a reason to bust the girls out. I said as I raised my hand, Ms. Midnight. I exclaimed. Yes, Midoriya. She asked. Permission to go first. I asked. Well, by all means. She said. Just choose one of those we know that's fine. I said as I walked over to the table, pulled out a capsule, and pushed the button, revealing a case. I set the case down, opened it, and pulled them out. I have my own. Huh? What the foo? What is that? Present Mike asked. They're my girls Ebony and Ivory. I've been waiting for a reason to bust them out. And now I have one. Now, I said as I held them in my hands. Let's have some fun. Asashi's POV ho. This isn't even fair. I said as I leaned over the railing to watch my son in action. Why? Iri asked. Because. Iri. I said. Izuku is a natural sharpshooter. I gave him a slingshot when he was four and once he got the hang of it, never missed a shot. It was at that moment I knew. Bang that he needs guns in his repertoire. Bang 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 bang. But isn't that not a good look for Izuku to use a gun? Inko asked. Snipe uses a gun in combat. So long you don't hit something vital it's fine. And besides, he's been itching to show off this skill for weeks. Bang 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 It also helps that he designed Ebony and Ivory to be powerful and rapid. Semi-automatic. 44 Magnum. It was hard work, but it was worth it for him. I said as I saw the last target, but that's showing off. I said not even trying to hold back my smile. Incredible. Present Mike exclaimed. He not only got bullseyes on every target, but also wrote 1IM on the last target. HMHMHM. Izuku cackled as he walked past the other students. Man I love that kid. Oh man that was fun. I exclaimed as I walked back to Melissa's side. Man it's been a while since I've let loose. Dude what was that? Kaminari asked. Ebony and Ivory. I said simply, what? Did you think my only skills on the battlefield was the legendary bat? The holy fry pan, rob, light, and other gadgets I had on me at the time. I have more tricks up my sleeve. I boasted. Wait. Oh shoot. Melissa hasn't shot a gun in her life. I looked at her, and her eyes had the same sentiment I had. I, I have to do something. Wait, I have an idea. Rob, I said as he flew out of my jacket pocket, help out Melissa. Beep beep. He beeped as he hovered over to her. Rob is extremely accurate. Her position of advancement is guaranteed. And there you have it. The top 42 contestants have been decided. Ms. Midnight exclaimed as she popped them up on screen. Wait, where's Melissa? She scored bullseyes with Rob she should be tied if not below me. In fact she's not on there. W but now we have a rule. Only those in the support course can bring in outside equipment, so long you develop them yourself. Ms. Midnight explained, and Rob, was created by Izuku Midoriya, as such she cannot use it, so she has been disqualified. Biba, now wait a minute. I said as I began walking towards her. I gave her Rob so she can have a fair shot at it. If the two of us consent then it should be allow if it were a gun or anything without a mind or eye I would have. Ms. Midnight said, but it's a robot. Meaning she has an inherent advantage over everyone, even you Mr. Midoriya. As such she cannot advance. What? Izuku stop. Melissa said. With tears in her eyes. It's okay. I'll be fine. I I can just go somewhere else. She said before giving me a sad smile. You just go on ahead. K. Oh fuck no. Ms. Midnight. I'll cut it out are you aware of the rule 2479B? I asked. No way. Present Mike said. He's not. Mr. Aizawa said as well. Seems they know what I'm doing. And what do you mean by that? She asked. I'm challenging you. I said. Her eyes widened as I pulled out Ebony and Ivory. If I beat you in a head-to-head -head battle, will you allow Melissa into the second round as the 43rd person? What? Everyone exclaimed. So, what'll it mean Midnight? I asked. I see no reason as to why I should. Midnight said. But I do. Principal Nezu said as he was riding on present Mike's shoulders. There is a reason as to why I put that rule in there in the first place. But sir, and as such, I approve of this challenge. Principal Nezu said. But it has to be a unanimous agreement, and I don't see why I should agree. She said, that was when Principal Nezu stared at her dead in the eyes, because I said so. Ah right away sir, she exclaimed. Excellent. We shall have a brief recess to set up. Principal Nezu exclaimed. I nodded and headed towards the 1IM locker room. Once I made it and Melissa started yelling at me. You moron, why would you do that? Melissa exclaimed. Because I want you to go to school with me. And All Might is here, he can help you with you know what. I said. But you know what happens when you lose right? She asked. The loser gets expelled no questions asked. I said. Exactly. So why would you throw your school career away? Melissa exclaimed. Because you're my family. My Nakama. 
I said, I would do whatever for my nakamas. If staking my school admittance is what's needed, then so be it. You're G.H. She exclaimed, before gripping my collar, you better win. I plan to. Now then, we have a special challenge. Principal Nezu said. He took over the announcer's booth. The issue on the table. Melissa Shields placing in the second round. If Izuku Midoriya wins, she will be allowed to participate in the second round as the 43rd person. However, if Izuku Midoriya loses, then he will be expelled no questions asked. Wait what? A voice I recognize as Yuraka exclaimed. Expelled. That's Yeyurazu's voice. Midoriya, did you know? Shizaki asked. Yes, I said. And you challenged her anyway. Yuraka exclaimed. Are you that confident? Yeyurazu asked. No, I said. But I have to win for Melissa. But staking your expulsion? Kirishima asked. Why would you do thought Kirishima you always go on and on about manliness so let me tell you something. I started, a real man would rise up when someone takes their friend's smile away. I said as I stepped onto the stage. However, one stipulation before we start. Principal Nezu said as I stopped at my edge of the stage. The rule states that, hum, should a student disagree with a decision, he or she can declare a challenge. As such a staff member may take on that challenge. If he or she wins then the decision gets overturned. If he or she loses then they will be expelled. Wait, as such, the staff member they will be facing is, Slam I am here, to fight, Midoriya's POV All Might. Everyone exclaimed, You'll have to beat me, if you want to stay at Ua All Might said, I'm sorry young Midoriya. He whispered, Don't worry about it. I whispered back before gripping Ebony and Ivory. Now let's go. Ready? Principal Nezu asked as we all nodded, 3, 2, 1, go. All Might rushed at me and punched me square in the gut. I retched as he jumped back. I I didn't even see him. You know if you give up then I won't be expelled. I finished as I stood back up. I'm well aware of the rules. The whole reason I'm in what I am in the first place was because I read the rule book. But you of all people should know why I can't let Melissa lose. Then let us continue. Melissa's POV this is. Difficult to watch. And even harder to hear the commentary behind me. He should just give up. He can't win. He doesn't even have a quirk. How can he expect to even stand a chance against All Might? Yeah. And he won't be expelled if he gives up. So why doesn't he just do Tha Boom 1? All Might was covered in some kind of pink cement. Now. Izuku yelled as he aimed ebony and ivory at him and fired rapidly, monochrome volley. He unloaded his magazines into All Might, and once the guns couldn't fire anymore he staggered to stand up. I too I took your blows. To set that up. Now was smash impressive, but not enough to beat me. All Might said, now, what's your next move? I, I thought that would work, was what I heard him mutter as All Might rushed over and punched him in the stomach again. He keeled over as All Might caught him, I'm sorry. Young Mai no. Izuku yelled as he swung at All Might with his legendary bat. I woke KMPH Ka. He muttered as he spat up some vomit. I, I won't lose. I, I have to win. So Melissa can attend you a what? Everyone exclaimed. And if you think, I'll just give up. Then you're getting senile in your old age All Might. Izuku yelled as he rushed towards All Might and started swinging wildly. All Might blocked all of those swings and punched Izuku away. Young Midoriya, Stoha. If, you want to beat me, you're going to have to try harder than that. Izuku exclaimed, smiling as if nothing is wrong. He ran towards All Might and continued swinging. This time slower than before. All Might blocked them and punched Izuku away again. I I can't take this. Izuku sto see how much stronger we are when we believe in ourselves. Izuku exclaimed as he hobbled his way towards All Might, swinging his bat much slower and only left and right. All Might only dodged and punched Izuku back, before hopping towards the edge of the stage. I, I won't give up. He muttered as he limped towards All Might and began swinging at his head. His body worn out and full of fatigue, as the swings miss and Izuku fell onto the floor without All Might needing to move a muscle. Izuku. Izuku struggled to stand up. Why are you looking at me like that? Izuku snapped as All Might gave him a sympathetic look. I've done everything up till now. All without a quirk. I don't need a quirk. I I don't. All Might thud has stepped out of bounds. Izuku Midoriya wins. Principal Nezu said, as the big screen showed All Might with a foot out of bounds, he gave Izuku the win. All Might walked over and picked up Izuku. He fell out of consciousness right after All Might stepped out. I'm sorry, young Midoriya. That was all he said. That was all he could say. You mean to tell me? Recovery girl said as she, Mr. Aizawa, Present Mike, Principal Nezu, Midnight, All Might, and an unconscious Izuku were all in recovery girl's office. That her placing into the finals was the only way for her to get into UA. You neglected to tell me that. And in return you let this boy get battered and bruised in order to try and get her another chance to advance. Yes, Midnight said. And the only reason this all happened was because of a rule. Recovery girl asked. Yes, Principal Nezu answered. Well because of that rule a student has been beaten and battered with no hope of waking up before the second round Biji and GH. We all turned towards the bed as Izuku sat up in his bed. 
W why are all of you here? How are you awake? Recovery girl exclaimed. Am I not supposed to be awake? Izuku asked. No, recovery girl exclaimed. Are you hurt? I asked. I'm fine. He said. He's lying. Young Midoriya. I did Melissa make it to the second round? Izuku asked. Yes Mr. Midoriya, you won the challenge. Principal Nezu said. Then we're good then. Izuku said as he hopped off of the bed, staggered a bit, but stood up straight. Young Midoriya, you can't possibly I'm going to win the second round. No and ifs or buts about it. Izuku said, now come on Melissa. Fine, I said. Young Shield but I'm not going to let you get hurt again. I said, fine by me. Midoriya's P.O. V I feel like complete utter garbage. But, I need to reassure everyone that I'm okay. A few full powered punches from all might only hurt. A lot. Anyway, Melissa and I made it back to the stage. As Ms. Midnight returned as referee, she explained that we are having a cavalry battle. We shall form teams of 2-4, and our teams will have point values. The points are based on our rankings. We will be given a point value going up by increments of 100. So Melissa's point values would be 100. Next up would be 200. And my point value would be 100 million. Midnight exclaimed. I could feel everyone looking at me. Good. Time for me to finally prove that being quirkless doesn't mean weak. No. Wait. Ensure Melissa's advancement first. Then focus on your agenda. We are given 30 minutes to form a team. With Melissa, Shizaki, Yeyarazu, and Yuraka. I can't form a team with all of them and ensure their advancement. But then again. Wait. I know how we can all advance. I rushed over to Yeyarazu. Who was talking to Todoroki. Yeyarazu. I exclaimed as I ran towards her. Midoriya. Are you okay? She asked. Yeah, I'm fine. Not, I'm dying slowly on the inside. Anyway, I have a way so all of us at New Leaf can advance. We're talking here I'm listening. Yeyarazu said. You form a team with Yuraka and Shizaki. With your combined points of 41 0 23 4000, and whomever else your team adds you will have 10,400 plus points. I explained. But what about you? She asked. I'm partnering with Melissa. I said, it's imperative she advances to the finals, so she can attend you with you correct. Yeyarazu said, but what if someone takes your headband? Not going to happen, I said as I pulled out Ebony and Ivory, so please. I asked, all right. She said before looking at Todoroki, my apologies Todoroki. He just hummed to himself as he walked away. As Yeyarazu ran towards Shizaki, Yuraka, and the orange-haired girl Kendu, she got 12 o points. So in total that's 11,600 points. So what's the plan Izuku? Melissa asked, keep everyone at bay. I said as I pulled out Ebony and Ivory. While my rubber bullets won't kill, they will still hurt. A lot. But what if they breach our defenses? Melissa asked. Then, I said as I pulled out my legendary bat, I'll whack them away. There is no way that will guarantee us a why hey. Support buddies. I was hoping she would join us. Hatsum, Melissa and I exclaimed as she hovered towards us. Let me on your team. She exclaimed, with your point values, we'll have the spotlight for our beautiful babies. I thought we agreed to not call them babies. I said, oh come on. Hatsum exclaimed. Fine. This one time. I muttered. Awesome. She exclaimed as she pulled out her briefcase of assorted support goods. I think this will help us tremendously. I scanned the case. And found one that will surely help us. Oh yeah. We have this in the back. But a fourth member would be nice. I said as I combed the area for a fourth mem now that's interesting. Why has no one picked him up? Oh well. More opportunity for us. We rushed over as I stood in front of him. Takoyami. Care to join first place? All right, Melissa. I asked. Ready, she said as she took the left wing. Hatsum, I asked. As good as ever. She exclaimed she took the right. Takoyami, I asked. Standing by for battle. He said at the front as his dark shadow popped out. Same here. He exclaimed. Perfect. Our secret weapon is on standby as well. I said as I looked up at the sky. Remember, our goal is not only for us to maintain first place, but to also protect Yeyarazu's group if they need it. Not that they will. MMHMM. Hatsum nodded. All of New Leaf will advance. Melissa said. Understood. Takoyami said. Oh, and you're officially part of the New Leaf crew Takoyami, you signed the verbal contract. I commented jokingly. Fair enough. He said, I have been interested in brewing coffee. Oh I was just joking. But mom was getting on my case for only getting girl employees. I said, hey, why am I not a part of the New Leaf crew? Hatsum asked. You are. You just never bothered to show up to the interviewing process. I replied. You know what valid. Hatsum said. In start. Present Mike yelled. Oh right, the cavalry battle. I said as I pulled out the switch, get ready guys. They braced as I took flight with Hatsum's jetpack. Yuraka was nice enough to remove the gravity on our equipment as well as us. So we took flight without much issue. After all, there is no rule against cross-team help. Damn support course. After them, Tetsu Tetsu exclaimed. Now, Hatsum asked. Jiru now. 
Toru yelled. I know. She yelled as she sent her earphone jacks at us. Not necessary. I'll handle them. Takoyami said as Dark Shadow batted her earphone jacks away. Good work. I said as we landed. Once we did everyone started coming after us. At least they're ignoring Ye Arazo's group. Mwahahahahahaha. Oh great. Minta. This is too easy. This isn't a fight. It's more like a massacre. Shoji. He's inside Shoji. What we need is breathing room. Takoyami exclaimed. We can't be sandwiched between two teams. Right. I exclaimed but we didn't move. Shoot Minta's ball snagged our boot. Sorry Hatsum. I exclaimed as I activated the jetpack. We flew off, but at the cost of Hatsum's hover boot. My baby it's broken. She exclaimed. Necessary casual b-o-o-o-m an explosion. Back you goo. Don't think for a second you're safe. He exclaimed as he reached for my headband. I swiftly pulled out ebony and ivory. I am. Bang bang I shot him in both shoulders. He was in too much pain to try and reach for the headband. Sierra launched tape so he wouldn't fall and be disqualified. We had a rough landing. With that broken hover boot we can't control where we land as well. So we can't risk taking to the sky again. So we have to rely on Dark Shadow, Ebony, Ivory, and our secret weapon. How is Ye Arazu's group doi zero? Zero points. Who took them? G-I-I-I-I-I-H-H-H. Bakugu yelled I looked at the source of his anger. A blonde-haired boy Nito Monoma. He must have poked the sleeping bee weight. One of his headbands is 11,600. That's Ye Arazu's headband. Guys, Monoma has Ye Arazu's points. We need to get them back for her your fights with me. I turned to see. Should have known. Todoroki, Ida, Kamakiri, Tsunotori. I named as we stood face to face with Todoroki's group. Interesting choices. Enough small talk. Kamakiri said, we have a battle and shit. Yes we do. I said as I raised my hand into the air. They got ready for whatever I have planned. But nothing can prepare them for this. But I have my eyes on something more. Snap. I snapped my fingers and pointed up at the sky. Ladies and gentlemen. The moment you've been waiting for. Hatsum exclaimed after me. Melissa Shields, May Hatsum's, and Izuku Midoriya's greatest collaboration. Melissa added as he landed. Slam Rob Beta Mode. We all exclaimed. Rob Beta Mode is a complete improvement over Alpha Mode. Granted it took all three of our collective minds, hands, and time to build it, but it was well worth it. Beta Mode is sleeker, and the hydraulics in his arms and legs have improved for more striking strength and overall speed. Another big improvement was the addition of his palms being able to fire off lasers as well as his chest. It was difficult to pinpoint back in his alpha mode, but with Melissa's help we got it down. We kept the overall visual design the same and painted him gray. We'll save the gold and overall aesthetic for when we reach his ultimate form. Rob Omega mode. Is that even allowed? Kamakiri asked. It's their invention so it's allowed. Midnight exclaimed with a thumbs up. But you said Rob wasn't supposed to be used by S.H.I.E.L.D. earlier. Kamakiri exclaimed. That's Rob, normal mode. I said, not the ultra-powerful and awesome Rob beta mode. My creators, I thank you for the opportunity. Rob said, the opportunity to show the world true beauty. Not yet Rob. I said, we have yet to reach your ultimate form. Rob Omega Mode. You are correct creator. Rob said as he got ready, however, we shall reach that in due time. Correct. I said, think you can take on Todoroki. We need to get Yeyarazu's points back. I shall fight them. He said, we're counting on you buddy. I said as we sped off towards Monoma. While we were rushing him I glanced at the screen. The top 4 is below 11,600, so if we get that back for them, they'll shoot up to the top 4. But, we need to get them back. Well, if it isn't the golden boy of you, at Izuku Midoriya, he sneered. And if it isn't the guy who messed with the wrong people, I said as I pulled out ebony and ivory. Now give me the 11,600 point headband. Not a chabi ooom Bakugu rushed over and snagged their headbands. Oh great, one of them is the 11,600 point headband. Damn it. Well, looks like we'll have to settle for the 100 million. Monoma said, get the fuck in line. Bakugu exclaimed, hey scumbags. What? Both Bakugu and Monoma asked, but their expressions were blank. You're too loud. The boy with purple hair said, what was that? Ashido asked but her expression blanked as well. What's happening? Hiroshima asked, same thing. So responses is what triggers it. Huh? Kosai said, you get the trend. Soon both of their teams were blanked. Give me your points. The purple haired boy said, it was then that Bakugu took all of the headbands and handed them to him. Once he took them he looked at me. I got ready to fight. But he balled up the 11,600 headband and tossed it to me. His group just walked away after that. What a odd fellow. Bang no time to think. I need to get this to Yeyarazu then help Rob with Todoroki. Rob, I got the headband. Leave Todoroki and help us defend. I said, understood. He said as he fired off a dual beam from his palms and rushed to catch up with us. Yeyarazu, 
I exclaimed as I turned towards the time 10 seconds. Mike yelled. Shoot. I yelled as I looked at everyone. Sorry about this guys. I exclaimed as I jumped off and flew towards Yeyurazu's group with the jetpack. 5, 4, 3, 2, catch. I yelled as I tossed the headband at her. 1, she caught it. Time's up. Present Mike yelled as I flew back to my group. Now let's see what the top 4 teams are. In first place, Team Midoriya. That was close. I muttered. In second place, Team Shinso. I turned to see the purple-haired boy with his team. Ajiru, Takage, and Shota. Interesting picks. Good thing we had your secret weapon there. Takoyami said. It wasn't overtly necessary to win, but it's imperative in third place. Team Yegarazu. Present Mike yelled. That Yegarazu's team moves on. I finished. And in fourth place, Team Todoroki. Present Mike finished. I glanced at his team and sighed. Meeting Melissa in the finals just got a whole lot harder. Midoriya's POV Midoriya. I would like to speak with you hold that thought. I said, hey Shinzo. I yelled as I rushed over to the purple-haired boy. Uh, yeah? He asked. I wanted to say thank you for giving me the 11,600-point headband. I said, I had enough points to advance, so I just gave it to you. He shrugged. It wasn't a big deal. Don't blow it out of proportion. Well you know what is a big deal. You quirk. I exclaimed. It's so cool. You caught not so loud. He exclaimed as he covered my mouth as people passed by. My quirk is my ticket into the hero course, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't say anything about it. He whispered. Ame. He let go of my mouth. But aren't you relying heavily on your quirk? If you want to get into the hero course, shouldn't you have other methods of attacking? Like what? He asked. Well that depends. I started. How proficient are you at hand to hand? Who? I don't know. He asked. I didn't respond right away and looked at his arms and legs. Well you look pretty slim. Not much muscle going on. Do you have some sort of weapon? No. Where are you going with this? He asked. You're in the sports festival. If you desire to join the hero course then people, mainly villains, will watch this. They will study the quirks of future heroes and pick it apart. I explained. If you want to become a hero you need a plan B all the way to plan Z because people will figure out your quirk and it will be as good as useless. Because, I said before leaning in, if people figure out your quirk relies on a verbal response, then they won't answer you back. Then what do you suggest? Shinzo asked. How about working out for starters? I began, then maybe work on your hand to hand. Actually work on your everything. Then and only then would you be able to survive the hero course. Midoriya. Oh right, Todoroki. Sorry, gotta go Shinzo. I said before walking away. But I turned back around to face him. Good luck. He waved back as he left for lunch. After that interaction I followed Todoroki to a hallway. So what did you want to talk about? I'm going to be up front here. Todoroki said before looking at me dead in the eye. Have you ever heard of quirk marriages? Yeyarazu's POV looks like class 1 is going full on fan service. Present Mike exclaimed. You're right they are. Wait, is that? Midoriya. I exclaimed as we all saw him. In a cheerleader outfit like ours. It really showed off his upper body and legs. We're, come on Takoyami. Midoriya said as he dragged Takoyami. Who looked really uncomfortable. And also in a cheerleader outfit on mind you, out with him, we're standing in solidarity. He exclaimed as he ran towards us only to flip onto his hands, do a triple handspring, and land into the splits. The crowd erupted into a frenzy once he finished his move. Whoa ho ho. Present Mike cheered, strong and agile to boot. Takoyami on the other hand just walked over to us and shook his pom-poms. W what are you doing? We're standing in solidarity. Midoriya exclaimed. I saw the perverts of the class tricking you. So if we all do it, it won't be weird. That's so manly. Kirishima exclaimed as he took Midoriya's hands. I had you all wrong Midoriya. You're a tried and true badass. Really? Midoriya exclaimed clearly flattered by his praise. Yeah. Kirishima yelled. And? I thought about what you said earlier. Oh you have? Midoriya asked. Yeah. A true man would stand up for his friends. Kirishima exclaimed. You know what? I want a cheerleading uniform too. Yeah. Midoriya yelled out. Yeyarazu, can you make him one? Why not? I created a spare cheer uniform. Awesome. I'll put it on right after the draws. Biz Midnight exclaimed. Oh, right. Forgot about that. Midoriya sighed. Let's go. Well, at least we have some company. Before Midnight could pick the matches, Ajiru and Shota forfeited their spots. They said that they don't remember how they made it in, and as such don't feel right about entering. It was probably Shinsu's quirk. Midnight approved of their forfeit and said that the fifth place teams can advance. The only other team that got points was Tetsu Tetsu's team. So Thai group spoke amongst themselves and let Tetsu Tetsu and Honuki advance into the finals. Makes sense since Away and Yui's quirks aren't meant for combat. After that, the matches were chosen. Izuku Midoriya vs. Tetsu 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 Tetsu. Hitoshi Shinzo vs. Shoto Todoroki. So I might face him next. Fumikage Takoyami vs. Juzo Honuki. Melissa Shield vs. Achako Yuraraka. 
Momo Yeyarazu vs. Tenya Ida. Satsuna Takage vs. Mei Hatsu. Tagaru Kamakiri vs. Ibarra Shizaki. Ponitsuno Tori vs. Itsuka Kendu. Okay, let's press pause for a momentary interlude. Before the battles begin, it's time for some pulse-pounding side games. Present Mike yelled. Alright, let's go Takoyami. I exclaimed as I dragged Takoyami towards the girls. I regret this decision already. Yeyarazu's POV come on Yeyarazu. You gotta pump them higher. Midori exclaimed. How are you of all people the most pumped up about this? Kayuyuka asked. I don't know. Midoriya replied. I was doing this to stand in solidarity, but now it sounds like something fun to do, even if it means wearing a skirt. Kayuyuka countered. I mean he's pretty hot in it. A green-haired girl commented. What was her name again? Takage. W what? He asked, setting a new record for redness. But that's only the first of the onslaught, as Mina joins the fray. Yeah, I mean do you see his abs? Mina asked. You can grate cheese on those. Takage replied with a smirk. W wait. Midoriya pleaded. But he was doomed from the start. And look at these thighs though. He can crush 13 watermelons at once with those. And these arms. Solid as a rock. And his butt though thud and he fainted with a bloody nose. I think we went too far. Mina said. You think? Midoriya's POV. Ha. Huh. Fluorescent lights. Where am I? You're in my office. I jolted up to see recovery girl. I don't know what her emotion. What's a word that's a mix of angry and sad? Malcontented. Disgruntled. Miserable. Desolated. Oh right. Smad. What? Recovery girl asked. Your emotion. Sad and angry. Smad. Recovery girl looked at me before sighing. Did All Might give you a concussion? Because you walked out there in a cheerleader's outfit. Took one of your classmates with you. Fainted because of compliments. And said that. Probably. Whammo. Why are you hitting me? All Might yelled. Because you caused this ultimately. Recovery girl yelled, you didn't have to take the challenge. I didn't want to show bias. All Might countered. All of a sudden, oh snap, the double counter. Well that's fine. All Might muttered in defeat. Anyway, your match has been postponed, you're going last. Recovery girl explained. Okay, wait did the others go? I asked. All but the last three, yours included. All Might explained, and if you're wondering. Melissa advanced, as did young Yeyarazu and young Shizaki. Young Hatsum used her match as an advertisement before jumping off. That's completely in character. What about Todoroki's battle against Shinso? I asked. Over in seconds, Todoroki froze him in place with a giant ice attack. All Might said. So I faced Todoroki when I beat Tetsu Tetsu. But still, I feel bad for Shinso. He has a great quirk and deserves to be in the hero course. Can I challenge someone to let Shinso into the hero course? I asked. No, by the rule. If you succeed in the challenge you don't get another until the start of the next school year. Recovery Girl explained. So if I get in trouble I can't challenge it. Shinso could challenge it though. But I don't think he's willing to try it, especially since the staff know his quirk. Anyway, you're cleared to go. Just don't go fainting again. Recovery girl warned. I I won't. I said as I walked out. But I'm scared if I have to face her in the finals if that's the case. Well either way I don't have to face her for a while or at all. Positives Izuku, positives. But of course once I made it back up to the top floor of the stadium I was immediately called to the stage, making me have to go all the way back down. Awesome, on the plus side, I get to use something I've been waiting to show off. Luckily Nezu approved of it along with Rob Beta Mode. Ebony, Ivory, Legendary Bat, Holy Fry Pan, Rebellion, and even Light. This will be fun. FWOOSH The 8 match consists of these top competitors. Present Mike yelled. One of them's a passionate, manly fighter with nerves of steel. The hero course is Tetsu 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 Tetsu. Bring it. Versus. The boy who has taken the sports festival. And the world by storm with his powerful gadgets and knack for exploiting the rules. You a sole member of class 1 I am. Izuku Midoriya. Can I not sound like a criminal please? I muttered even though he can't possibly hear me. Can't wait to see who wins this just so they can fight Todoroki. Begin. Tetsu Tetsu wasted no time in ironing up and rushing at me. H A A H. Too easy. I said as he threw a punch. I gripped his arm and vaulted over him. Midoriya shows off that athleticism we saw during the interlude. How can Tetsu Tetsu keep up? Like this. He yelled as he threw another punch. I dodged and hit him in the face with my legendary bat. Then another punch. Another hit. The cycle kept repeating, causing Tetsu Tetsu to be extremely frustrated. Stop dodging and fight me like a man. No, I'm good. Because that's a fatal flaw of your quirk. I said as I dodged another punch. What do you mean? He asked as he threw kicks into the mix as well. Your quirk obviously runs on a time limit. There is no way you can keep your steel mode up forever. I said as his punches and kicks became more fast and frantic. And judging by your change in speed I'm 100% correct. I said as I pulled out the legendary bat and hit him in the face, causing his steel armor to crack. J-H. He yelled as his body stopped holding his steel form. And now, 
It's time to end this. I said as I pulled out my secret weapon. Is that a pen? Tetsu Tetsu asked. It's more than that. I said as I clicked the button on the tip, causing it to shoot out a beam that wrapped around his body. W what is this? Tetsu Tetsu asked as he struggled to get free. I borrowed this idea from Super Metroid. The grappling beam. I said as I pulled him towards me, but it's game over. I yelled as I pulled him over my head and sent him flying out of bounds. Tetsu Tetsu is out of bounds. Midoriya advances to the next round. Midnight yelled as the crowd cheered. That match was kinda boring, but don't fret, for we have a big one coming up. It's Izuku Midoriya vs Shoto Todoroki. Present Mike yelled. At this point I might as well stay here, but I need to prepare myself for the second match. Sorry I'm late. I yelled as I rushed onto stage. I had to reload Ebony and Ivory. Well you're here now. Midnight said as Mike started announcing the match. But I could care less about that. Todoroki was adamant about beating me without using his fire side. Needless to say I'm 100% insulted. Begin. Present Mike yelled as Todoroki sent a massive ice wave at me. Wanting to end this quickly. Yeah right. Smash what? Todoroki asked as Rob Beta Mode stood at the ready. You said you wanted to beat me without using your fire. You insult me Todoroki. I muttered as I felt light land on my head. Because I'm going at you with everything I have. So you better take me seriously. I said as I pulled out my legendary bat. Or you won't make it past me. Midoriya's POV Midoriya. You have approval for all of those do you? Midnight asked. Yes. I said as I handed her the approval form. He even approved of your bird. Midnight asked in disbelief. Her name is Light. And yes he did. I responded. Alright. Let the battle continue. Midnight yelled. I nodded and looked at Todoroki. So what's your plan? I asked as he looked at me with wide eyes. As you can see. Your ice is nothing in comparison to Rob's beta mode. Even if you unleash more powerful ice, I can join in and offer Rob assistance. With the way you're going, your body won't be able to withstand your ice without your fire to back it up. You're lowering your chances to win. All for some petty grudge what would you know? Todoroki asked which made me stop my advancement. You know what I've been through, and yet you ignore it. Why? Did my bastard of a father put you up to this? He yelled as he rushed at me in an ice wave. I used ebony and ivory to steer him off course. He stopped but blocked with ice. I couldn't give a shit about that man. I yelled out as I smashed his ice myself. Once his defense was shattered I gripped the collar of his shirt. Did you even read the note I gave you? NGGH no. Todoroki yelled as he used his ice to trap me. But Rob pulled me away in time. I don't give a damn what's in that note. I just threw it away you damned idiot. I yelled which made him flinch. That note was from Aunt Ray. Your mother. W what? He asked. Before growling in anger. Bullshit. He yelled as he rushed at me with a nice wave. Rob stay back. I said as I got ready. Now go away. He yelled as he swung at me. But I dodged, gripped his arm, and aimed his head up to the top viewing booths. Look. I yelled as he looked at the booth I aimed his head at. The booth where mom, dad, Iri, and Aunt Ray are at. W what? Your mother is here to watch you. I said as I tossed him aside. And how would she feel, knowing that you're suffering over her? Huh. I. I refuse to be used as quirk it's not as it's yours. I yelled as I kicked him in the stomach, causing him to roll several feet. Endeavor scum, I know that and you know that. But your quirk isn't his. Your quirk is yours. I yelled as I lifted him up. So stop screwing around. Step out of that asshole's shadow and fight me like you mean it. Todoroki tensed up as fire erupted from his left side, as steam emanated from his right. Finally, I muttered, as a smile wormed its way onto my face. You're helping your opponent. He muttered, you fool. Even though you wanna win this battle. Now which one of us is screwing around? He muttered as the flames calmed down to only come from his left side. I want it, too. I'll be a hero. Yes, Shoto. Oh great. It's the number two hero. And worst dad of the millennia, have you finally accepted your purpose? That's it. Very good. This is the dawn of a new era for you bang G-A-H-H. Sorry, slipped. My hands are a little wet you know. I said as I pulled Ebony away from him. J. Tahaha. Todoroki laughed, before calming down, now, this has gone far enough, I agree, let's finish this, I said, Todoroki sent a massive ice wave at me, Rob, I yelled as Rob lifted me above the ice and threw me at him, I pulled out my legendary bat and hoped for the best, almost, almost, thought I f wump concrete pillars appeared in front of me, this is going to hurt, midnight's p-o-v-b-o-o-o-m-g-h, the explosion flung me off of my podium and onto the ground, gee god, that's power, what happened just now? What the heck is up with your students? Mike asked. For once I agree with him. The air around the ring had been thoroughly cooled down, and then rapidly expanded when heated up. Shota explained. Of course he would be unfazed by this. Wait, that's what caused the explosion? How hot did that fire get? Jeez, I can't see a thing. Is the match still going on, or what? Huh. Oh right. My job. I struggled to stand up and waited for the smoke to clear. As soon as it did, it showed both fighters still on the ring, but very near the edge. Todoroki was held up by an ice wall. 
while Midoriya was held up by his robot Rob Beta mode. They both withstood that. The both combatants are still in the ring. I said, what? Mike asked, how is that possible? The ring is completely destroyed. So who would advance to the next round? Mr. Aizawa asked, that brat should be disqualified. He shot me. Endeavor yelled, he's got a point there mid I give up. Wait, Todoroki. Midoriya asked as Todoroki walked off the stage. Shoto, what do you think you're doing? Endeavor asked. Todoroki did nothing but walked away. W well, Todoroki has forfeited the match. The winner is Izuku Midoriya. I yelled. The crowd didn't cheer. The second I finished the verdict Midoriya fell onto the ground. His robot carried him off to recovery girl before the medical bots came to pick him up. He may have won this match. After some repairs our next match of Melissa Shield and Fumikage Takoyami will begin. His biggest match is up next, Midoriya's POV, NGGH. Oh great, back here again. How do you feel? All Might asked, like I was hit by a 50 megaton warhead. I muttered as I sat up. Well why didn't you dodge the blast? Rob could have flew you above it. Recovery girl yelled. In retrospect, I should have whammo. I yelled as I rubbed the impact site. Hurts doesn't it? All Might asked, whammo. All Might yelled, yes, it does. I responded, what happened? I asked. The stage has been rebuilt, thanks to a certain someone. Recovery girl muttered. Yeah, Todoroki did it. I responded. He actually has a valid point. All Might said, whatever the case, you're fine. Just exhausted and dazed from the point-blank explosion. Recovery girl explained. Takoyami is out of bounds. Melissa Shield is the winner. I'm missing all the cool matches. Anyway I gotta go see the other matches. Wait you should re-slam no time for rest. I gotta see who I might be facing in the finals. What happened? I asked rhetorically as I looked at the stage. Kendu has been immobilized. Ibarra Shizaki advances. Midnight yelled. Awa man. Oh well. We all made it so that's all that matters. Wait. Melissa. I exclaimed as she stood beside me. Looks like we're meeting before the finals. She responded. And whomever wins gets to either fight Takage. Or Shizaki would Melissa Shield and Izuku Midoriya come to the center stage. Speaking of. I added. Yeah. Hey, wanna make a bet? She said with a smirk. What kind of bet? I asked. Haha. <laughs> Whoever loses has to buy the winner five things of their choice. I'm flat broke. But if I win, then I can get some upgrades for Rob for his gamma mode. Deal. I exclaimed as I shot out my hand. Then let the games begin. F-W-O-O-O-S-H alright. We got a massive battle coming in for y'all. Present Mike yelled as the screen showed Melissa and I on the right side. The girl who has been kicking major butt and taking many names. Melissa Shield. Obvious censorship. Melissa commented. And next. The boy who is solely responsible for the butt kicking and name taking she's dishing. His use of his gadgets have been smart and bold. Izuku Midoriya. We'll roll with that. I said as light descended onto my head. And next. Beep beep. Rob hovered next to me. What's this? What happened to Rob's beta mode? Present Mike asked. I see now. That's smart, Mr. Aizawa said. We both made Rob beta mode. As a result we both would have control over him, meaning any commands I would give she would stop, and vice versa. However, she didn't touch Rob's normal mode, meaning Rob in his normal mode would listen to me and me alone. I explained. K. Melissa chuckled. You have a knack for exploding the rules don't you? Class 1 I am was made because I exploited the rules. I said as I pulled out my legendary bat. So you're pulling out your weapons, eh? That worries me. Then I shall do the same. She said as she tapped the bracelets on her arms, covering her hands with rainbow-colored gauntlets. Mother 3. I asked. Yep, the mystical gloves. I'm so glad Nintendo released Mother 3 to the US last year. Melissa said. Ignore the fact that last year was 2073. Now let's see who has the better game. B, e, but that's not fair. Mother 3 is the better game in terms of story. Then why didn't you make something from Mother 3? It's been available in Japan for decades now. Because I'm not a brawler or kicker, and I'm not using sticks to fight. Speaking of fight, why don't you two get on to fighting? Mr. Aizawa asked. Oh yeah, forgot. We both said at the same time, before looking at each other. Ready? Melissa asked. Ready? I answered. Then let's go. Iraraka's POV match of the century. I exclaimed. Whoa whoa whoa. Match of the century. Kaminari asked. Even more so than Midoriya and Todoroki. Siro asked. Yes, Ayurazu voiced in, because this is no holds barred. Each side is fighting to advance to the finals. But still, Todoroki and Midoriya had a lot of power and explosions. Mina asked, you're missing the point here. I said out loud, there is not a greater battle, clang than a battle between family. Ayurazu and I said, clang clang bang pew the sounds of metal hitting metal, gunshots, and lasers being fired echoed throughout the stadium. Every attack is parried, blocked, dodged, and countered in a non-stop barrage of attacks. W wait. What do you mean, family? Kayuyuka asked. 
They are cousins. Her father and his have a lot of history. So much so that they're basically brothers. So Midoriya and S.H.I.E.L.D. view each other as cousins. Yeyarazu explained. They're extremely competitive, but would do anything to help each other. I added, now that you mention it, they do have that close ties type deal. Kirishima said. So, does that mean she's single wham whack bang plinko? Minda yelled as he gripped his unmentionables. Wait, bang, why did you shoot him Izuku? Melissa asked as she punched him in the gut, because he was being bad. He replied by hitting her in the face with his elbow. H how did he hear all the way up here? Siro exclaimed. Forget that. Ask how he ricocheted a bullet into his fucking crotch. What kind of accuracy does he have? And that was in seconds. Kyoyuka exclaimed. Seems there is more to him than meets the eye. Shoji muttered. It took you three weeks to see that? Yeyarazu asked. Midoriya is many things. Fast, strong, ingenuitive, a strategical genius, not to mention a master of his equipment. He doesn't have a quirk, but honestly he doesn't need one. She said before looking over the ledge towards the fight. In fact, boom seems you forgot about this. Midoriya yelled as shield was coated in the same pink cement that All Might was covered in. She struggled to get free. You had more of this stuff. I come equipped for every single scenario, except a fire ant infestation. Should really work on that countermeasure. Anyway, Izuku exclaimed as he smashed the cement and hoisted her over his shoulder before the realization hit. Gah. She yelped as she started to hit his back. You jerk. Sorry. He said as he tossed her out of bounds. But I'm dead broke. Dang it. She exclaimed. Melissa's shield is out of bounds. Izuku Midoriya has advanced to the finals. Midnight yelled. Midoriya walked over and shook Shield's hand. But wait, why did he say he was dead broke? Yeyarazu asked. SNRK. Yeah haha. What's so funny? They probably bet before the match. What dorks? I exclaimed, before continuing to laugh. Illegal gambling is unbecoming of heroes. Ida yelled. Ida. I'm your friend. But get that stick out of your ass. I replied before laughing at his arm flailing. I I don't would you wanna idiot shut you whack sorry about him. He's upset his plan was thwarted. His terrible plan. Kendu said before ducking back down. Hey hey, Takich asked peering over the wall. You wouldn't happen to know any crippling weaknesses of Midoriya's now would you? No, Yeyarazu and I said. Dang it. Oh well, I'll just have to improvise. She said before ducking down. The way she said that was 100% terrifying. Midoriya, I'm scared for you. Melissa's POVOOOO. I think we should add an electric wave to Rob's arsenal. He exclaimed. Of course his five things for me to buy would be for Rob's gamma mode. And a flamethrower too. Oh and a transformable hand cannon. Calm down there Mega Man. I said which snapped him out of his speeding thought train. Shouldn't you be watching this next Ibarra Shizaki is out of bounds. Satsuna Takage advances to the finals. Match. What happened? I didn't even see anything. Wait. What happened to her hair? Izuku did you see he's gone? Izuku. Shizaki's POVM Midoriya. What are you doing here? And why do you have a bucket of water? I asked. I'm here to help you with your hair. He said, I I saw how subconscious you were about being bald, so I want to help you. But your match, you won't be able to make it in time. I pointed out, would Izuku Midoriya and Satsuna Takage come to the center stage? Mr. Aizawa spoke out. Right, he said before pondering for a moment. I got it. He exclaimed as he dug into the locker. Here, W what is this? I asked, it's a red cap. It had the word Nintendo on the front. It's a hat. He said, I had a bad haircut a year ago. The kids wouldn't stop making fun of me for it. So dad bought that for me. I vowed to never get a haircut again. And never took it off for a long while. Then my hair got wild and out of control. So I couldn't really wear it comfortably. So I'm letting you have it. E but this hat is yours it's not like I can't buy another one if I want it. Nintendo sells those all over the place. Besides, you need it more than I do. And I want you to see my match. He said before glancing at the clock. I'm going to go now. Bye. He exclaimed before rushing off. It fits perfectly. Oh she owes a nice hat. Tetsu Tetsu exclaimed. Thank you. I responded while sitting down in between he and Kendu. Midoriya gave it to me. You accepted gifts from those slimy whack I got at Kendu. Away said as he laid Monoma onto his chair. Thanks, Kendu said before looking at me. So who do you want to win? She asked me. I would prefer my Nakama would win. I said simply. Well, even over your own classmate. Tetsu Tetsu asked. He has done. A lot for me. I said as I tugged the bill of the cap down. Before the others can comment. Mike screamed into the intercom. A-L-L-L-R-I-G-H-T. Oh, it all comes down to this, folks, from his own class, and showing that he has more than earned that, the quirkless boy wonder, Izuku Midoriya, and his opponent, she has split this competition in more ways than one, Setsuna Takage, Midoriya, win this, no one's POV ready green bean, Takage asked with a smirk, G green bean, no, she's a combatant, treat her as such, don't get nervous, Midoriya scooted himself as he got ready to fight, yes, begin, present Mike yelled, 
Takage split off her hands and rushed towards Midori. An attack from three directions he thought as he pulled out Ebony and Ivory. Rob needed a recharge, and Light was running out of steam as well, looks like it's up to me. He took aim and fired at the hands, but they swiftly flew back to Takage. While she was a foot away, shoot, have to take this attack and count Chu Takage cupped Midoriya's head and planted a kiss on his lips. G-A-H. All of one and one B yelled in unison. M-M-M. Midnight muttered watching the spectacle unfold. Oh, Ashido exclaimed as she pulled out her phone to record the whole endeavor. Oh shoot, the kiss attack. Melissa commented with a smirk as she pulled out her own phone. He's doomed. He's struggling to escape. But his lone weakness is being exploited. Eirazu commented with a hand on her forehead. As she looked at this whole interaction on the big screen. 12, 13, 14, 15. Takage thought as Midoriya fell back. Swirls in his eyes. It took 15 hits to take him down. Izuku Midoriya is unable to continue. Satsuna Takage wins. T that was something. Present Mike yelled. Unable to comprehend what happened. This isn't going up on TV right. He asked his partner in commentating. Yes it is. Aizawa responded. But that's kinda harsh. And embarrassing. Mike responded. It's a weakness he has to overcome. That's all Aizawa had to say on that matter. But still. That's going to be rough on the kid. Mike thought as the unconscious Midoriya was carted off. Shizaki what's wrong? Kendu asked as she stood up. I'm going to go check on him. Midoriya's POV. What? Happened? I asked as I sat up. You were kissed to unconsciousness. Recovery girl said. Which is by far the most ridiculous reason for anyone to come here I've ever heard. Wait that was real. Yes. It was. All Might said as he showed him the live stream. Fud why me? I asked as I collapsed onto my bed. Regardless. You still have to go out there to accept your medal. All Might said. See can't you just mail it to me. Please, that's not how it works. All Might said as he headed towards the exit. Like it or not, you have to accept your second place. And he left. Oh, that reminds me. Recovery girl spoke up as she handed me a slip of paper. This was on you. I grabbed it and unfolded it. Hey, sorry for kissing you like that. Saw a weakness and exploited it. But I must admit, you have very soft and kissable lips h huh? Not to mention you're very adorable and hot as fuck. I is this going somewhere? Basically, I wanna date you, call me. Said oh and there's her number. A girl has given me their number. And it was not work related. Slam Midoriya are you okay? Oh my Nakamas. And why is your face so red? Yuraka asked. Oh shoot, you are it's nothing. I exclaimed as I hid the note. Very poorly apparently because they saw it in an instant. And Yeyurazu grabbed it in an instant. Seems you have an admirer Midoriya. Yeyurazu said. He has a what? Yuraka asked as she snatched the note and scanned it. Woohoo Midoriya. You lady killer you what's wrong? I I don't know. Anything about girls. Most of the girls I met hated me because I'm quirkless. I said as they paled. W what do I do? What if she's just rubbing salt on my wounds no? Takage is anything but a liar. Shizaki said. She may be a massive flirt. And extremely provocative. But she's never a liar. E but what do I do? I asked. Well do you like her back? I don't know. I never even talked to her before. I muttered. But. She's really pretty. Especially her green hair and eyes. They're like mine I said. Realizing what I was saying. But I don't know anything about her though. So get to know her. Yuraka said as she tossed me the note. But you need to go to the award ceremony. You have no choice on that dude. She's right. What do I do wait? Idea. Yay Yurazu. Yes Midoriya. She asked back. Can you make me something? Takage's POV. Oh my god he's even more adorable now. Midoriya. Remove that bag. Midnight muttered with exasperation. No. He exclaimed. But it was muffled by the bag. If I can't see them. They can't make fun of me. That's not how it works. But whatever. She muttered before turning towards the audience. Now, let's break out the hardware. Of course, there's only one person worthy of distributing the awards. H-O-H-O-H-A. No way. Is this real? Citizens. I am here with the medals. The number one hero. Ruined that didn't I? Midnight asked as All Might glared at her. Now that you're here All Might, why don't we start the presentation? Haha. <laughs> Young Shizaki, congratulations. All Might said as he put the medal on her shoulders. He pulled her into a hug and whispered something to her. Probably personal advice, same with Shield. Now for second place. Young Midoriya, take off that bag. All Might muttered with the same amount of exasperation as Midnight. No, I'm embarrassed. He muttered as All Might yanked it off. No, he yelled. Take this medal and acknowledge where you went wrong. Overcome your embarrassing yet common nervousness around the female gender. Only then would you be able to achieve your goal as the symbol of peace. Why yes sir. He muttered but keeping his head down. Maybe I was too forward with high young Takage. Congratulations. All Might said as he placed the gold medal on my shoulders. You understand the ideology of doing whatever it takes to win, as well as overall skill in the games. It's clear that you're a recommended student. He said before pulling me into a hug. Go easy on him okay. 
Haze, fragile. I resisted the urge to laugh. I gathered that, thanks all might. Here they are, the winners of this year's sports festival. But listen closely. Any of you first years could have ended up standing on these podiums. Think about what you've done today. You've challenged each other, learned, and climbed even closer toward your goal of being pros. I think the next generation of heroes is proving to be our most promising one yet. All Might exclaimed before pointing up, so I have one more thing to say. I want to hear everyone yell it with me. You know what it is. Thanks everyone, for your hard work. All Might yelled. Plus Ultra. We all yelled. Really dropped the ball there All Might. What? That was the perfect time to say plus Ultra All Might. All of the students yelled. GHH. Well, yeah, I guess, but everyone did such a good job. Congratulations all of you, Mr. King exclaimed with pride. Not only did our own Satsuna Takage win the gold, but Ibarra Shizaki made it to the semi-finals. Everyone clapped. We have finally defeated 1A. Monoma sneered. All right, all right settle down. You have two days off to recuperate from the sports festival, Mr. King explained. There will be a bunch of pros who would, would want to recruit you. We'll go over that once you return. Get some well-deserved rest. Your training resumes once you return. Yes, Mr. King. I definitely went overboard. What was I thinking? No. Satsuna calmed down. He's probably celebrating with family. Yeah, yeah. No need to get worried over the fact that it's been five hours since the sports festival and EHAS ain't texted me come on. Busy busy it's him. I exclaimed as I picked up my phone. Please pay 8886 yen I don't care about phone bills. I yelled as I read the text and tossed my phone aside. Bzz bzz I picked up the phone again, Satsuna. You're being too loud, damn it mom. I yelled as I tossed my phone aside again. Bzz bzz why do I get bill notifications, texts from mom, and other shit when I'm worrying about him ignoring me wait unknown number. Un, hello, talkage, it's that green haired boy you kissed during the sports festival. Is he upset about that? I should apologize. Sint, oh, yes sorry about that. Un, don't apologize, it's fine. Un, how are you? Sint, I'm good, how are you? Un, my dad teased me to no end about that, kept asking me who you were, and if you were my girlfriend. Melissa also would never stop teasing me about I apiest fuan. This is Melissa, please date my kuib juak of gun, damn it I didn't mean to send that. I couldn't help but laugh, but I can't pass up a golden opportunity. Sint, are you sure she sent that? And you weren't indirectly telling me to date you. Sint, hello. Un, this is Melissa, you killed him. Sint, I did. Un, yeah. He hasn't had any good female interactions. The only good ones he has was family or work-related. To have someone genuinely want to date him. It's nerve-wrecking for him. Sint, oh, I'm sorry for being too forward. Un, he huddled underneath numerous blankets. She sent a picture of him underneath a cocoon of blankets. Un, but he said it's fine. Sint, he's extremely adorable. Un, yeah he is. Anyway, as his family I would appreciate it if you didn't hurt him. Sint, I would never. Un, that's good to hear. Too many people hurt him. Sint, who? I'll show them not to mess with him. Un, don't bother, I tried, but Izuku talked me out of it. He would even defend his tormentors. Too kind to a fault if you ask me. Of course he would. Un, anyway, I think he's too embarrassed to talk to you right now. But I think I can pass along a question if you catch my drift. It's now or never Satsuna. Sint, is he available for a day out in the town? Un, he said yes. Yes? No wait. You're not out of the woodwork yet Satsuna. Sint, what time would work for him? He has a job after all. Un, you've been paying attention. Un, Shizaki, Yeyorazu, Yuraka, and myself will take his shift. He did take theirs on their day off after all. So anytime tomorrow. Sint, so 10 a.m. Un, he said yes. Sint, then I'll see him tomorrow. Un, have a good night. I closed out of the app and set my phone on my nightstand. Fuck yeah. S-E-T-S-U-N-A quiet down. Sorry mom. I quietly yelled before clutching the nearest soft object, which was my body pillow. I did it. I got a date with green bean. Oh what do I wear? Something nice since it's getting warmer. But nothing to revealing. Don't want to kill him on sight. I need to go looking right now. Midoriya's POV I'm freaking out guys. I exclaimed as I stood in front of the mirror of my room. Eh, I think that's too fancy for a first date. Yuraka commented. Yeah, but it's best I bought that just in case. Yeyarazu responded. But I do believe this outfit would fit well. Shizaki said using her finds to pick up a white dress shirt and a pair of black dress pants. Hmm, I think the vest and red bow tie would help with that. Melissa said as she held up a black and gray striped vest and red bow tie. Why am I here again? Takoyami asked. Because you are, unofficially, a part of the New Leaf crew. As such we help with each other's problems. Hiroraka said. Yes, that's our credo. Shizaki added. Then, I believe both Shield and Shizaki are correct. The shirt, vest, and pants match. And the bow tie goes well with his red shoes he refuses to give up. He said. T they're my lucky shoes don't shame me. I exclaimed in defense. I will considering you have 20 minutes until it's 10. 
and it takes 10 minutes to ride the train to your designated location. Shoot, Takaj's POV I'm late. I'm late. I'm Suo late. I hope he hasn't been waiting so long or at all. Okay, our meeting place is right around this Kobam Thudo. Hey, watch where you goi wait. Green hair, red shoes. Midoriya. T. Takaj. He exclaimed as he stood up to help me up. I am so sorry. D. Don't apologize. We ran into each other. I reassured. Before getting a closer look at his outfit. Nice threads though. Hello. Thanks. He muttered looking away. He's so shy and so adorable. Ugh my heart. And I like your bag. It was super soft and cushioned the impact. What material is it? He asked with a smile. He talks about the weirdest things. But wait a moment. I don't have a bag Midoriya. I said as his happiness quickly turned into fear. T then what did I run into? He asked. I can't pass this up. That would be my boobs Midoriya. I said with a smirk. As all the color on his face drained, leaving him a pale white. I am sorry. He exclaimed with a bow. I I didn't mean to. Oh this is too good. Let's see how far I can push this. I'm sure you didn't mean to. Unless you were lying and have an x-ray quirk. And this was a long con to cop a feel. T that's not it at all. W why are you laughing? He exclaimed as my laughing fit died down. H ho. Oh man you're fun to tease. I muttered as I leaned onto his shoulder for support. H ha. Man that was good. But seriously Midoriya. It's fine don't worry about it. He eventually regained his normal face color. Which brings out his adorable freckles. Man the more I look at him the more adorable he looks. T Takaj. Are you okay? I snapped out of my trance. I'm fine. I exclaimed, winking at him with a thumbs up, making him blush. Adorable fact number 10, 42, he blushes easily. So let's shake and bake. I've never been to Mustafao before, and as such you need to be my tour guide. Oh okay, he said as he looked around. I know of places. Follow me. I I Captain. MMM. This is Su Guad. I exclaimed as I scarfed it all down. Yeah, family-owned restaurants are most of the times better than big-name restaurants, in my own opinion. Midoriya said as he bit into a piece of fried pork. It's just something about the food that tastes better. Like it's been handcrafted with love and care. Kinda like your store. I said. He tensed up before blushing. Why yeah. Like New Leaf. Speaking of. When am I going to be led into your little posse of yours? P posse. Yeah. What did you call them? What did he call oh right? Nakamas. Oh oh. Well. What? Am I not worthy? No. He exclaimed. Before reverting back to his nervous self. It's just that. I don't know. Okay now I'm curious. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know. What we are. He asked, unsure of his sentence, why you made it clear you want to date me. Be very clear. Oh, right, maybe. In retrospect, I should have been more tactful about that note, and you're beautiful and all. But I, don't know you. We don't know each other at all. I don't know what's your favorite color, your hobbies, your likes, your dislikes. And you don't know any of that for me. So you don't want to do this? I asked. Yes. Well no. I don't know. Let me start over. I would like to get to know you better. Does that make any sense? Yes, it makes a lot of sense. I said before standing up to bow, I'm sorry for rushing this. And no it's fine, he exclaimed, which garnered a shush from the patrons, as sorry. But, we're here now, so let's get to know each other. I said, I would like that. Midoriya's POV no way. Takaj said with disbelief. I it's true, I responded, as I felt my face heat up with embarrassment. There is no way you can rap. I I can, like freestyle or can say numerous words in a minute. She asked, be both. Okay now I don't believe you. I I can prove it. I said, suddenly feeling confident. All right, let's go then. She challenged. G give me a beat. Say no more I got something for ya. She said as she pulled out my phone. The smirk on her face. I nodded and took a deep breath. My life, on it. My game, top hit. I'm looking down in the cockpit. My enemies locked on targets. Who okay? Invading my kingdom today. Not if I got something to say. They can come with their gangs. I'll take them out with a bang. All right, all right. Analyze tactical angles keeping it right like I was an Egyptian. They're fantasy. And I'm non-fiction. Now rev it on up like an engine. Storming the gates of the sovereign. Step out the caves like a goblin. But look at the plans that I cook up. They go so well, they've done screwed up. I'm unbeatable, I was able. Straight killing them, broke and disabled. I, armed to explode, C4. More pressure than the sea floor. They come to my room, got sent to their doom. Like what you looking at me for? Okay, you know I'm a hero. Beat every villain that I touch ho. Yeah I beat him bitch, I am so cutthroat, okay. Oh that ended. How was it? T Takaj. That. Was awesome. She exclaimed. I mean you kinda lost the beat near the end, but those lyrics were fire. T they weren't that good. You're being modest again. She responded. But seriously, how come you don't rap more often? I rarely have time. Well alright then. So any other secret yet awesome skills you got in your brain green bean? Um, well, I can play guitar. Dude. Rap. And a musician. You just got ten times hotter. 
T. Talkage. It's true. What's next? You going to say you're a good singer? No way. I, I didn't even say anything. You didn't deny it. She probed leaning in closer. W. Well, I just thought, if I didn't do well as a hero I would. Be a singer. I muttered looking away with embarrassment. Sing something. I, I don't think so. Come on I won't laugh. Uh, no, Midoriya. Please. Oh okay fine. Yeah, she exclaimed with excitement. I hope that the others are doing well at New Leaf. Meanwhile at New Leaf all I traded in my ocean for a bigger ocean. Melissa yelled. I traded in my ocean for a forest. Hiroraka exclaimed as well. I thought we were playing Uno. Yeyurazu asked. Shizaki made the correct choice to avoid this game like the plague, and instead read a book about botany. Apparently this version has cards that allows you to make your own custom cards. Takoyami commented. I wrote one that forced the other players to rotate their hands. You're on my target list Takoyami. Melissa yelled. So be it. Takage POV holy shitballs that was amazing. I exclaimed as Midoriya hit his face. Man I struck gold no. I struck emeralds with this one. I it wasn't that good. He muttered. Bullcrap it wasn't. I yelled. Jeez dude. With all these talents you're going to make me look bad. What's next? You going to tell me you're a great dancer. Oh no I'm a terrible dancer. He said bluntly. Mom said I have her voice. Always said I didn't though. There's that modesty again. I replied before grasping his shoulders. Dude. You're talented. Now flaunt that talent. Oh okay. He squeaked as I let go of his shoulder. Great. Now I have my own personal Spotify playlist. I I never agreed to that. He exclaimed before realization sank in. H hey. You never told me your talents. Oh yeah huh. I asked. Well. I can do impressions. Are really? He asked with amazement. Yeah, I was bored and wanted to learn how to do impressions on people. In fact I think you'll figure out who this is. I said as I got my vocal cords ready. Why? <laughs> Hello, little listener. Bahaha. <laughs> he laughed. T that sounds exactly like present mic. Anyone who can yell louder than 110 decibels can do a good present mic impression. I countered. Yahoo. I got one. He said before he took a D. Oh my god. I am here. B-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-L-H-
Yes, they all said in unison, Yui just nodded. I cannot help but sigh at their actions. I can only hope Ibarra is having a better time at her job than here. Shizaki's POV will this game ever end? Hiroraka yelled as she had to draw four more cards. It's been going on since Izuku left for his date. Takage's POV look at the fish. He exclaimed pointing at the different fish of all shapes and sizes. Okay he needs to stop. Any more cuteness and I'll die. Yes Midoriya, those are fish. I said as a smile warmed its way onto my face as he looked at every single one analyzing them. It's amazing how whenever there's a large amount of different things he'll be like a kid at a candy store. Oh look, a lizard exhibit. Out of my way. I said as I rushed over to the lizard exhibit. He followed suit. Look, the legless lizards. They call them snakes, but that's a massive misconception. Yeah, you can tell based on their eyes. Snakes don't have movable eyelids, while legless lizards do. And legless lizards don't have a forked tongue and can actually detach their tail from their body. Man you know a lot about lizards. I said as we looked at the legless lizard move around. Yeah, back at my old home, before my grandparents retired and passed New Leaf on to mom and us, there were a bunch of lizards and I wanted to learn more about them. Right, that's the same as my house before we moved into an apartment. There were so many lizards I wanted to learn more. Yeah, hey look, a chameleon. Where? I can't see it. I exclaimed even though I'm looking straight at it. It's right the oh I see what you did there. Dahaha. <laughs> Kamori's POV what are they doing now? Itsuka asked, sounding tired at watching. Nerding out over lizards and fish. Yui added, sounding equally tired. I'm not surprised. Pony responded. Well at least they're happy with each other's company. I said, yeah, they said at the same time. Does this mean I am allowed to head to my home? Ryaiko asked, yes, we're going home. Itsuka said, thank goodness. Well, it was kind of fun to see them have fun. Takage's POV thank god they're gone. This bug is itching me. Now I have a little alone time with Mido bzzzzzzz. He dug into his pocket and pulled out his phone. Hello, what do you mean they're locked in a four and a half hour game of Uno? How does one even do that? Uh-huh. You need me to come home and talk some sense into them. Tell Satsuna I said sorry. Okay I'll do that. He said as he hung up the phone. That was Shizaki. Apparently Melissa, Yuraka, Yeyurazu, and Takoyami are locked in a four and a half hour game of Uno, and she needs me to talk some sense into them. Or bring her a new book series, either or. SNRK. Behahaha. Oh man that's ridiculous. I laughed. Oh alright, let's get you home to save them from Uno. He nodded and we boarded the train to his home. After a short train ride, his station was here. Well, I'll see you later Takage. He said as we stepped off the train. Yeah. Oh wait Midoriya. I called out as he turned back around. What is I chew if you were to ask me? Why I just kissed him with no warning. A tenth of me would say I wanted to see his reaction. The odd nine tenths would say I wanted to kiss his adorable soft cheeks. But his reaction was pretty damn cute. He just froze. His face is red and he isn't moving. Midoriya. I asked as I waved a hand in front of his face. Nothing. Well, time for plan B. All right up you go. I said as I hoisted him up onto my shoulder. WW what W wait. Takage let me down. This is Mba you're squeezing my butt. I know. I know. And judging by this weird thing that's poking my shoulder. W what are you talking about? It seems someone likes it from behind la 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 la. I can't hear anything you're saying. Oh yeah. He's going to be fun to be around. Oh Izuku you're ba. Hello Mrs. Midoriya. I said as I stepped into New Leaf. Nice place you got here. See thank you dear. But why are you carrying Izuku on your shoulder? Oh that, I kissed him and he froze up. So I hoisted him over my shoulder and carried him here. You don't tell her that. He yelled but I slapped him in the butt. Eep. Hush, the adults are talking. Oh I like you. You take control. Mom. Haha. <laughs> anyway, you two should go upstairs. I feel like we're going to get a noise complaint. She said. Got it Mamadoria. I said as I headed upstairs. She seems nice. Kill me now. He muttered as he covered his face with his arms. No, I said as I opened the do y e a h h h or f r e e w o o l. Hiroraka and Shield were hopping up and down as Shizaki, Yeyurazu, and Takoyami had noise-canceling headphones on. So this is what we come back to? I asked as Hiroraka and Shield looked at me. 
and in turn everyone else. You went out on your first date, and you're already touching my cousin's butt. Melissa, he yelled as I set him down. So, how did it go? Uraraka asked with a smirk. It was fun, Midoriya said with a bright blush. So, what's your decision? Shield asked as she nudged his shoulder, wanna be her boyfriend. Do you? I asked. Yes, 